in a little tent, but oh, just like the river I've been running, never since, it's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change gon' come. But oh, yes, it will. I wanna be with you. 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 If I didn't ride blade on curve, would you still? If I'm in my mind at work, would you still? Keep it a hundred, I'd rather you trust me than two. Keep it a whole one, don't got you, I got nothing. Time for tears, wasted water's all it is, and it don't make no flowers grow. Good thing might come to those who wait, not for those who wait too late. We gotta go for all we know, just the two of us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us. Just the two of us. Just the two of us Building castles in the sky Just the two of us You and I I got diamonds to win to see slides in both ears Dice falling on the Las Vegas trips and I So that only we might miss the fight Fuck or not, I keep it while I'm in my shorty bag You know she want a mom and she tattooed that ass I'm a lover boy she got the toys Keep it coming, you a rider This that roll myself with Jay and count my figure shit This that stepping out, I feel like I'm that nigga shit I drop 30 on this room, we ain't gon' skip the shit If I catch you not enough, then it's moving your body Is this real? Temperatures rising, I don't wanna feel I'm in the wrong place to be real Oh, and I'm longing to love you just for a night Kissing and hugging and holding you tight Please let me love you with all my might Reasons, the reasons is that we're here The reasons that we fear I feel is the wall Disappear after all the reasons, all the reasons why, all the reasons, reasons why, all the 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 reasons why, all but I refuse to let you go If I have to beg, plead for your sympathy I don't mind, cause you mean that much to me Ain't too proud to beg, and you know it Please don't leave me, girl Ain't too proud to plead, baby, baby Please don't leave me, girl now I've got a love so deep in the pit of my heart And each day it grows more and more I'm not ashamed to come and plead to you, baby If pleading keeps you from walking out that door Ain't too proud to beg, and you know it Please don't leave me, girl
Nah, that's just passion. We love the game. You already know what it is. FYL. You don't got tough skin. You might as well not even come on in. Talk to him. FYL. Blow the whistle, man. We too official. Better check the film. We not one of them. The greatest to ever fall above the rim. They wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Cut the small conversation, debate on major levels. This the playoffs, baby. Bring that pressure, we never settle. Cost and spin, getting it in, I wanna win. That teamwork got us headed to the ship again. Oh, better than MJ. Cut it out. Half these fans in the stands don't know what they talking about. Half court jumpers, crowd going wild. FYF rank number one, you better say it loud. Intellectual talk, but. Fuck your feelings, Olaju oh, one too overrated, Kobe still a realist, top 10 all time, now how they cut the line, Magic Johnson, Draymond Green, one in the same kind, fuck your feelings, fast break, stop and pull a J, he got how many rings, nothing else to say, with the team, live streaming, play by play, this the dream, full steam on the road to 100k, FYL, blow the whistle, man, we too official, better check the film, we not one of them, the greatest to ever ball above the rim. They wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Cut the small conversation, debate on major levels. This the playoffs, baby. Bring that pressure, we never settle. Cross and spin, getting it in, I wanna win. That teamwork got us headed to the ship again. Started small, then turned into big dogs. They treat me like the GM. I just make the call. No matter who my op is, I'ma stand tall. Then pull up to the game, fresh like I just left the mall. 100K, 100K, 100K. Check the score. We gon' bust the shot clock. Fans running to the floor. All I hear is go this and go that. Man, your team suck. Hang it up like a coke rack. I love the game, I admit it. I can't quit it. Step in front of me, man. Your ankles gon' get the best. Been a legend like Moses Malone, way ahead of my time. This the greatest sports show ever. I just had to remind. Yes, FYL, FYL, blow the whistle, man. We too official. Better check the film. We not one of them. The greatest to ever ball above the rim. They wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Cut the small conversation, debate on major levels. This the playoffs, baby. Bring that pressure. We never settle. Cross and spin, getting it in. I wanna win. That teamwork got us headed to the ship again. FYL Sports, man. Lamont, man, we back. Another live for you guys, man. My apologies. I haven't been live in the last week and a half or so, man. Just been busy. Just been busy. Hold on. Let me make sure my audio levels was good, man. I know StreamYard been acting funny, man. So if there's any issues, y'all let me know in the chat. I'll try to correct it. Salute to everybody that's pulling up Mingo Jester. Brian. Virtuoso, Aboriginal. We're going to be bringing you guys up on this panel. We got to cook on some things, man, because while I have not been going live over the last week and a half or so, I have been listening to a lot of the things that have been that are being said in this basketball landscape. Um, You know, on another topic, and this is going to be a future live stream, I'm listening to Kwame Brown run around complaining about Bronny James entering the draft. This is the same Kwame Brown running around talking about Stephen A. Smith is trying to get the league to implement rules to prevent players from entering the draft at an early age. Running around crying the, the la if I'm a if I'm a perspective, if I'm a perspective, hold on, we got a spammer in the chat. I got to get him out of here. If I'm a perspective NBA player, the last player that I'm getting any any information from with regards to entering the draft is Kwame Brown. 
It's just odd. All the people, all of the people that have entered the draft, all of the players that went too early, all of the players that went to the G League Ignite that probably shouldn't have went there. He chooses to talk about Bronny James, a, a kid who is the son of a billionaire, a kid who actually has pretty good NBA qualities, right? And it's not like he's going to get drafted in the lottery where a lot of pressure is going to get put on him early. It's a, that's just another live stream that's we're going to be talking about, man. You know, Kwame Brown is, has re-entered the basketball circuit to talk about basketball things. Um, and I just think we got to revisit that right there. I think that was a little silly. Um, we also got to talk about, man, and that's this is the harder today's conversation is. Um, man, I've been I've been listening to a lot of people talk about women's basketball over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's just delusion and bad takes all over the place. Just delusion and just bad takes. Um, when we talk, we'll talk about Jason Whitlock, we've we've seen how Jason Whitlock has jumped on this women basketball train. He's running around now saying Caitlin Clark is the goat of women's college basketball. I don't know about the goat of women's college basketball when you got players like Cheryl Miller, when you got players like Brianna Stewart. See. When, when, when you got players that exist like that in women's college basketball, when you got players like Maya Moore, I'm not I, I'm not about to run around and say that she's the, the goat of no women's college basketball. Because I, I literally watched, the last time I checked, Brianna Stewart was not only the best player in women's college basketball, but she also won four national championships. She was, imagine being the best player and winning four national championships. That's the GOAT of women's college basketball, right? If we're, if we're, ta if we're truly talking about GOATs of women's college basketball. Jared, he says not, but on that short list, um, I don't know, Jared. Is that is that true? What do you mean? Is is on a short list. Y'all get caught up in a lot of, a lot, a lot of hype. Brianna Stewart was historically stacked in. Okay. Jared, tell me two other players on this on those historically stacked teams. Jared, real quick, Jared, before you Google it, before you Google it, Jared, type in the chat real quick. Tell me all some of the historical players before you Google it. I didn't think so, Jared. See, you're so quick to say how stacked the team was. See, and and what we and what what, what people forget to talk about here. Right. With, with, and the reason why I did the title of the video this way, um, I said that Caitlin Clark will be the WNBA's next Adam Morrison. And, and there's a lot of people, especially on IG, that messaged me and said, why Adam Morrison? I'm about to tell you why. When you look at Adam Morrison, Adam, Adam Morrison played on a Gonzaga team. Pretty good teams. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to act like those Gonzaga teams weren't very good. But when you stack those teams up against the best in the country, they were never good enough. He, he as an individual talent, was able to get them so far in the tournament, but, but only so far. Never going to be good enough to get it done. Um, also, those Gonzaga teams, they, those Gonzaga teams were able to really load up a ton of wins playing a lot of mediocre competition. So a lot of Adam Morrison's best and biggest games came against very low quality, low tier competition. Let's take a look. And so if we're just looking at, okay, Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes had a really good year this year. Who did they play this year? All right, let's let's just take a quick glance at who they played this year. And they went 34 and 5, mind you that. They played DePaul to start the year. Clark University. They played FDU, Fairleigh Dickerson. They play Virginia Tech. They play lowly 
Northern Iowa. Then they go to Kansas State. Then they go play Drake. Then they go pl play Purdue. No, not Purdue. They play Purdue Fort Wayne. Oh, then they travel to Florida to play Florida Gulf Coast. They play Kansas State again, Bowling Green, Iowa, and then and then they play Wisconsin. And this, and mind you guys, this is one of the years where the Big Ten in women's basketball was down. Cleveland State, Loyola, Chicago, Minnesota, Michigan State, Rutgers, Purdue, Indiana. Mind you, none of these teams are ranked. Because the Big Ten was down, Wisconsin, they played a ranked Ohio State team and lost. Nebraska, Northwestern, Maryland, Penn State, Nebraska again, Michigan, Indiana, a ranked Indiana team and lost. Illinois, Minnesota, uh, Ohio State, uh, Penn State, Michigan, and then they played Nebraska again. This is their this is their this is their regular season. See, it's easy to especially when you have someone, especially when you have somebody that's chasing a lot of records. When you are able to because the one thing you let's just start this off by women's basketball. Women's basketball is extremely thin for talent. Meaning that you're going to have the cream of the crop. And then after you get past the cream of the crop, it turns into garbage. So I was listening to another podcast today and they were talking about four star women's basketball players. Once you get out of the four stars in women's basketball. You, you are essentially dropping to two and one stars. Because there's a gap between the best women's basketball players and the worst. There's really no in between. So there's not a lot of true four or three star type players. Now, some of those players can be molded and developed and become seniors who play like three and four stars. But the gap between the best talent in women's college basketball and the worst talent is huge. And so this is why in women's basketball, you consistently see abnormal blowouts especially when the best teams play like low level mid major type teams so the, so the one thing i have to look at is she didn't play anybody they never were true tr really tested they didn't have to go through a gauntlet of a conference that was loaded with ranked opponents like similar to a south carolina in a loaded conference where a lot of teams let, let, let me, I'm going to show you guys what South Carolina's schedule looked like. And I'm going to just show you the difference when you, when you really go out there and you have to play heavy hitters all the time. He says the great white hope falls again. I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't call her all that. She's a good player. She's a, she's a really good player. But but I just think that there's a there's a lot of problems that not, a lot of people aren't being honest about. So when we get to South Carolina and this is a, this was a member. All the talk going into this championship game was about Caitlin Clark. It's funny how nobody was talking about the undefeated South Carolina team. Well, let me show you the South Carolina schedule. This this is a 38 and 0 South Carolina. All right. They start the, this. Now, mind you guys, this is how South Carolina starts the year. I, I showed you guys how Iowa started their year playing a whole bunch of cupcakes. I'm going to show you guys how South Carolina chose to start their year. They they choose their. So we saw that Iowa played their exhibition versus Clark University. South Carolina chose to play their exhibition against Big Ten Rutgers. That's just their exhibition. They start their year off first game of the year versus number 10 Notre Dame. This is how they start the year. Second game of the year. This is how they start the year. They're playing number 14 Maryland. 
This they, they don't they don't even get they didn't even have time to get to any bum teams. They started the year off going straight out the gates against the heavy hitters. See, this is why I compare it to Adam Morrison, because you, when when you when you are a true. The, the best of the best teams schedule and play the best of the best schedules. You cannot give me a cupcake schedule and tell me you are one of the best players in the country. Now, she is one of the top 10 players in the country, but a lot of her stats and the things she was able to do statistically is because they played a lot of cupcake schools. That is a fact. And I just showed you Iowa schedule. So the, South Carolina started the year off number 10, Notre Dame, number 14, Maryland. Then they go to a, just right outside the top 20. They play Clemson, right? South Dakota State, Mississippi Valley. Then they have to play number 24, North Carolina. Then they got to go play a ranked Duke team. Then they got to go play a ranked Utah team. And this is before they even start conference play. And once they start conference play, they got to go against Mississippi State, Missouri, Kentucky, Texas A&M. They got to play number nine, LSU, Vanderbilt, Auburn, Ole Miss. Uh, they got to play number 11, UConn, right? And they're able to win that game. Tennessee, been a powerhouse in the women's game for years. They have to go through a gauntlet of a schedule. They have to play LSU multiple times, all these teams. That's the that's the sign of a true heavy hitter. And, and this is generally one of the reasons why a lot of the players that come out of that South Carolina program who are supremely battle tested always do well at the next level. If you look at the center that came out of South Carolina last year, went straight into the WNBA cooking. This is why they transition well because they are battle tested. So for, for all the WNBA players, and so this is where the WNBA players are right and the WNBA players are wrong. There have been a lot of WNBA players that have came out and said she ain't going to be able to do what she's doing in college in the WNBA. That is a fact. If you watch Caitlin Clark's game, Jared, this is not hating. This is just pure basketball logic. If you watch Caitlin Clark's lane, game, scheming scheming against her is fairly easy. It becomes much more difficult to scheme against her because of the talent gap. And so this is why when Caitlin Clark, this particular year, when, when her team played against ranked opponents, they struggled. They even took losses because those teams with regards to talent that can go out there and deploy the necessary players to scheme against her, it works. This is why we saw the Indianas and Ohio States beat her. And so when you look at what she does best, when you look at her game, similar to Adam Morrison has, has, in, in, in the sense of playing college basketball, she has crazy range. She can get her shot off at any particular time. She has really good range on her shot. She has the ability to make a ton of tough shots. You got to give that to her. But outside of that, and, in, and she is a, a decent passer in the transition. Sunday A says, Lamont, she beat them too. GWs and everything. I don't know what GWs is. I don't know what that is. You, when you come on the panel, you can explain yourself. She, yeah, no, Brian Holiday. They did beat LSU and UConn. Now, LSU was a, a good team this year. LSU definitely fell apart. And then they definitely scraped away a win against um, a UConn team that was not the normal UConn teams that we normally see. This wasn't a normal UConn team. In regards to UConn standards, this was a down year. This was a UConn team that only played five players. 
They only had five players. Gino Ariema could not sub anybody. So this is why they looked really good to start the game, but really bad to end the game. You can, Brian, that's, that's a couple games, Brian Halliday. And, and, and Brian Halliday, similar to Adam Morrison, Adam Morrison beat some really good teams in the NCAA tournament as well. Again, y'all, I'm saying Adam Morrison. I'm not saying she was a complete bum. Adam Morrison was one of the best college players. He might be one of the best college basketball players in history. In, in, in regards to how the men are ranked in college basketball. So y'all don't take the Adam Morrison comparison and get all butt hurt. I'm comparing her to one of the greatest men's college basketball players ever. And I'm, and I'm showing you the similarities in how both of their teams schedule games, how both of those teams played a lot of slouches, which elevated both of their numbers, and how both of those teams, when they ran up against top tier competition, they generally fell short. I'm not saying they never beat anyone. I'm saying they 10 times, most times when they ran into highly talented, talented teams, they fall short. And in women's college basketball, the gap between good talent and bad talent is so humongous. Phew. It's rough. I'm not going to say in Lorenzo the animator, I'm not going to say that the refs beat. I'm not going to say that the refs beat UConn. That was a bad call at the end of the game, but refs never win or lose games. Players win or lose games. There was a lot of things. And I think really, if, if you're, if you're, I'll blame that loss on Gino because the reality is he did a poor job recruiting and you got five girls out there that are extremely tired and you're not subbing anybody because you don't trust anybody on your bench. How do you recruit all of those girls on that bench? And you don't have not one to two girls on that bench that you can trust to come in to give some of these girls some breathers. So if so, if I put it on anybody, I'm putting it on Gino or Emma. Because you wasn't subbing, you're running five girls for four quarters. Now, if it was a two-quarter game, UConn wins by a landslide. But it's four quarters, and they got tired. Yeah, they're injured too. I give you that. But at the end of the day, you got to bring, you got to find a way to give them a breather. You can't just run them into the ground like that. It, it, I mean, it is what it is. It sucks. But we've seen we've seen we've seen some of the best Division One men's teams start subbing in walk-ons. You don't really you don't relegate to not subbing at all because people are injured. Bad Max says your analysis is showing uh, um, a weak basketball foundation, so it's W E A K because your typing is showing a weak uh, English language foundation. That appears to be common in younger generations. Well, I wouldn't consider myself in the younger generation. I'm over 30. Um, and I'm going to drop the link so you can tell me your foundation of basketball. Because mine is just comparing Caitlin Clark to one of the greatest men's college basketball players of all time. And you guys take offense to it. And see, a lot of you guys, the only people that take offense to this comparison are the people, are the people that are looking at what Adam Morrison did at the NBA level because he, he was a bust at the NBA level. And then they don't like the comparison. Do I think that Caitlin Clark is going to be a bust at the WNBA level? I don't know. It's, and, and, and the reason why I say I don't know is because she's going to be fighting against two demons when she goes to the WNBA. There's going to be two elements that she's fighting against. The number one element that she's going to be fighting against when she goes to the WNBA is the WNBA players themselves. If you listen to WNBA players talk, they are not willing to relinquish the throne to the new young players. They are see the, the see the see 
the the current WNBA players now are are running around begging for everybody to come watch. They're begging for people to come watch. They want people to come be fans and go watch and whatnot. But what they want is they want people to come watch them. They don't want people to come in all eyes on an Angel Reese and a Caitlin Clark. They want people to come watch because what they're saying is, oh, Caitlin Clark's on the way. All right, is everybody going to come watch us now? No. What people are going to do is people are going to be watching Caitlin Clark still. You guys need to figure out how to get some of the fame and notoriety that she has. That's one of the demons that she's going to be fighting against. Now she's going to be fighting up against players that really don't want her there. Number two element she's going to be fighting up against is she's in a league, the WNBA, that is notorious. The WNBA probably has the worst player development in all of sports, in any sport, football, basketball, anything, bowling. As far as player development goes, the WNBA has the worst player development or player transitions programs ever. If you can't come in and figure it out, the WNBA will kick you to the wayside and move on to the next. This is why over the last five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, we've consistently seen the WNBA will draft you at number three. They will draft you at number two, four, five. I mean, you could literally be a lottery pick in the WNBA and get waived in three weeks once the season starts. This is the only, what I want you guys. I want you guys to imagine your NFL team drafting a quarterback at the number eight spot and then waving them the second week the season starts. They don't care to develop. They don't care about development. They don't care about none of that. See, this is what they're going to do. See, because the WNBA is so stupid, you guys, what they're going to do is they're going to go tell Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark and Cameron Brinks. When they get drafted, they're going to say, hey, you guys have to earn your spots. You have to fight against all these vets to get into the starting lineup. That's what they're going to do. That's how stupid these teams are. No, because if I'm a, if I am the GM of the Indiana Fever, you know what I'm going to do? Whoever, whoever my starting point guard is. I don't care who it is. Let me look up the Indiana Fever starting point guard. Hold on. Let me see Indiana Fever roster. Watch this. So the Indiana Fever have the number one pick in the WNBA draft. Let's look at they look at let's look at their roster. Okay, let me, here's their roster right here. All right. I don't know any of these names other than Aaliyah Boston, who played at South Carolina last year. I don't know any of these any of these players. Okay, let's just say, for example, I don't even know if she's the starting point guard, but let's just say, for example, Erica Wheeler of the Indiana Fever is the starting point guard. You guys know what I'm doing if I'm the owner of the Indiana Fever? I'm saying, I'm calling my secretary up. I'm saying, can you call Erica Wheeler in to, uh, to, the, uh, to the office, please? And I'm going to say, hey, er Erica Wheeler, thank you for your services. You are officially waived. We have a new starting point guard. That's what I'm going to say. And when Caitlin Clark walks into the door, first thing I'm going to say after she signs that contract, Caitlin Clark, you are the starting point guard of this team. You will be playing 35 plus minutes a game. You need to figure this shit out ASAP because you will be leading this team by hook or crook. You better go figure it out. Jared, I'm just saying, I don't know who's actually starting, Jared. See, but why, I want you guys to watch what happens. See, the, the, the NBA is really good at this. If you are a number one pick, the NBA is really good at saying what, what they do with LaMelo Ball. I know LaMelo Ball came in in one of those funny years when it was a shortened season. Man, you better go ahead and get out there and start. Anthony Edwards, what, we don't got time for you to sit, get out there and play. Hey, Victor. I know you just came from France. Get your ass in the starting lineup, man. It's time for you to figure this out. See, the WNBA is so stupid. 
they're going to tell these girls, you got to earn your spot. You know, when you a lottery pick, you don't got to earn shit. You got to, what you have to do is you have to prove to everyone that you a bum. Y'all remember how Kwame Brown had to do it? I'm talking about the Washington Wizards played Kwame Brown, started them, gave them minutes, did everything they could. But you're going to have to prove to us that you a complete bum before we let you get up out of here. We not cutting you in a couple of weeks. We're going to try our ass off to develop you. Mark says this guy is a jerk. How am I a jerk? I'm just telling you guys facts. This is why the WNBA is a failing league. Explain to me why players like Shyla Hill ain't in the league no more. Explain that to me. How you the best Australian player? You come get drafted to the number five spot and then waved in a couple of weeks. Explain that to me. That's because you got idiots running this league. Secondly, secondly, when, when Angel Reese comes in, and if I'm the WNBA, the first thing I'm doing is I'm calling both the teams up that have Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. I'm saying you need to start Angel Reese, figure it out in your roster. I don't care if she's a really a bum in real life or whatnot, but she's starting and we're going to propagate up this. We're going we gonna to continue to beef with, with Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. And that's going to continue on in the NBA. And we're going to make that the headline matchup. So when they match up again, they're both starting against each other again. But see, you know what they're going to tell Angel Reese when she comes into the league? Hey, Angel Reese, you got to earn your spot. You're going to have to sit on the bench until you can prove they're, they're idiots. And, and, it's, they, and they don't need to start because they're ready or they're good enough. Especially if you're talking about the Indiana, anybody, you're talking about horrible teams already. Indiana Fever can't be talking about winning nothing. If you got the number one pick, you already trash. Everybody on this roster has to be garbage. So again, if the, so this is what I heard too. What did I hear? I, I was listening to after South Carolina won, you guys, check this out. They were, I heard, because you know they had a panel of the women talking and they were saying, well, I hope this, I hope this gets people to come watch the WNBA. I said, no, 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 no. I said, that's not how sports works. I said, y'all got to be stupid. I said, that's not how sports works. Uh, uh, anybody in here that's a fan of the NBA, do y'all just turn the TV on and you just say, man, I can't wait to watch me some NBA basketball. No. What y'all doing is, some of y'all, if you're a LeBron hater, they turn it on. I want to watch the Lakers lose, right? If you don't like the Clippers, I want to watch Kawhi Leonard and these dummies choke again. It, 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 or you watching your own favorite team. I'm not randomly turning the TV on just to go watch the Orlando Magic just because it's NBA basketball. WNBA got to stop being stupid thinking that people just going to come watch random teams play because, ooh, you guys got a few good players. I don't care about any. Yeah, they keep they, all they do is keep telling us this. We got good players, man. We can play in the WNBA. We don't care, man. Do y'all? We don't care. See, cop. See, that's what that's what college NCAA women's basketball. What they did was they did a good job of selling the storylines, the beefs, who these who who the players are on and off the court. They were selling it. When you when you see when you seen how they did um, the seedings, they made sure that LSU and Iowa could match up before the championship game because getting to the championship game ain't guaranteed. They made sure we saw that particular matchup. I told y'all these W the WNBA fans and all these people that want us to come watch all these WNBA players. We don't know who y'all. We don't know who y'all goat is. We don't know who your best three-point shooter is. We don't know who your best defender is. We don't know who your best defensive team is. We don't know who your best offensive team is. We can't go make no bets on none of y'all because we don't know what y'all do. And you about to send all of this, this talented core players, Cameron Brinks, Caitlin Clarks, the Angel Reese's. We about to send all of them into the WNBA abyss where they can just go disappear somewhere. No, we're not coming to watch no Indiana fever. Y'all need to rig the draft like the NBA did 
when they sent Patrick Ewing to the Knicks, you need to rig this draft because you need to get Caitlin Clark to 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 the Liberty or something. Stack that team up some more. Send it to the LA Sparks or something. Find a way to finesse and get a trade. Get Caitlin Clark on the Las Vegas Aces. If they get Caitlin Clark on the Las Vegas Aces, y'all can't tell me y'all not watching. I'm because we know the we know the ace is about to beat the life out of everybody. Y'all, y'all done sent her to the abyss. Then you telling us, then yeah, y'all expect the fans to get hyped up about her getting drafted to the Indiana Fever. Oh, she going to the Indiana Fever to go play with Timmy Fegbenny. She's going to the Indiana Fever to go play with Victoria Saxton. She's going to the Indiana Fever to go play with Maya Caldwell. This is who, this is her teammates, y'all. What what was their record last year? Let's see what their record was. I don't even see. It might it had to have been bad. If you got the first pick in the WNBA draft, they had to have been trash. He says, the Caitlyn hate is like LeBron. Ain't nobody hating on Caitlyn, though. I'm just telling you guys like it is. She is she is Adam Morrison. What she does well will not translate well to pro basketball. It just won't. All right, let's see. It doesn't even show they win-loss record, but they took a lot of L's, I'll tell you that much. It's not hate. When people, when I'm telling you right now, this is no hate aside. When you look at what she does best on the basketball court, what she does best is easy to scheme out when you got a competent team. When when you don't have a team full of one star recruits like what we see in college, because really, when you think about Caitlin Clark, she's relying. You know, the reason why you see screen, 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 because she's hoping I'm going to get one of these five stars up off me. So I can get switched on to one of these one or two star players. See, the problem with South Carolina is she had a five star guard in her, but she kept getting switched off on more five stars. And by the end of the game, I'm surprised nobody's really I'm surprised nobody really even called it out. By the end of that game, they they've made her fold. She essentially gave up at the end. They they broke her. I was to me, I mean, you if you a scout, you got to be looking at that. If you a scout, you got to be looking at that. He said, Bird went to the second worst team um, in, in Boston at 29 wins. All right. Okay. That was one of the, that was one of the best. You see, it's not about going to the worst team. As long as you, like, as long as you go to a good franchise, you good. Like when you get drafted to a Boston or LA, you always going to be in good hands because you you with a, a good franchise. We know over time, these franchises, they're not going to stay in the abyss, the bottom of the league. They're, they're going to go get out. They're going to make signings and bring people in to make this team better. When has the Indiana Fever ever been relevant? And I'll Let's not even look at the onset of the league when the league first started. Like we don't know nothing about the, the, the Indiana fever. But they're gonna send Caitlin Clark there for for her her name and her fame to all go just die. And and, and the players aren't gonna help it because the, she's gonna be fighting against the current players. Because the current players are going to be hating on her, just like we see now, because she's she got all the eyes, she has all the fame, all the TV, all the money is going to be on Caitlin Clark when she comes into the league. There's a lot of jealousy there. They don't want to see her come in and do well. Because what the players right now in the WNBA need to realize is that for their league to get better, the current players in this league have to disappear. You guys got to disappear. We don't want nothing to do with 
if you've been in the league eight, eight, seven, eight, five years in the WNBA, if we ain't started watching you by now, we ain't about to start watching you in no time soon. If, if, if you've been in the WNBA five years and we ain't watching yet, you it's over with. Go to the wayside somewhere because eyes are going to be on the new players, the Cameron Brinks, all these new players coming in. Caitlin and Leah are going to be a fire duo. No, they're not. They're not going to be a fire duo. No, they're not no Jonathan Clark. They ain't going to be no fire duo. Don't know what that means. I mean, look, man. He says they won. He says the Indiana Fever won 13 games last year. They got hot garbage. See, and that's another thing that hurts them. The WNBA season is too short. Who who else do y'all know? Who else do y'all know will start their season? And then when the Olympics starts up, you have to put your whole season on pause just so your best players can go play in the Olympics. And then when they come back, you start everything back up. We ain't trying to watch that, man. We not trying to watch that. And this is no shade, like I say. I think if if the Indiana Fever do exactly what I say, which is wave every point guard on your roster, put Caitlin Clark on the floor, play her 30, 40 minutes, and say, you if you're going to be the GOAT, you better go figure it out because you're not coming off this court because all eyes and ears and TV dollars is on you right now. You're going to have to prove to us first that you a bust before we take you off this court. So unlike Adam Morrison, where Adam Morrison got drafted into the NBA and the, the league wanted to see him succeed, they wanted him to do well. He struggled with the adjustment. He, it, he, he struggled with teams being able to scout out what he does best. And because he wasn't seeing a St. Mary's, a St. Peter's, uh, uh, Oregon States and some of these low level teams on a night in and night out basis because on every single night he had top tier competition and scouting reports against them. He struggled. He was never battle tested in college. If you look at even a guy like Steph Curry, once Steph Curry elevated Davidson, go look at how Davidson has started to schedule early in the year. They started once once they saw that Steph Curry was that dude, they stopped scheduling slouches. They started scheduling the heavy hitters, the best of the best. No, Sniper, three, five, seven. We comparing basketball to basketball because no matter how you look at it, basketball is basketball. Ain't no ch comparing no chick to a dude. We're, we're, we're comparing Adam Morrison's trajectory, how he was handled in college, who he played in college, Versus Caitlin Clark, how she was handled in college, who she played in college. And we see the outcome. How Adam Morrison was handled in college, who he played in college, led to him being a bust at the next level because he was not well equipped enough. Caitlin Clark, similar circumstance, playing a lot of slouches. Yes, you did beat a few good teams, but you never got it done against the best. Not battle tested enough to me. What result do you predict? Because a lot of people, you guys, you guys don't have no formula. Some of you guys are just watching her make a deep three and you say she's going to be the best in the WNBA. It ain't going to be like that. Not when the players are already. You think these, play, these players already making very little money. You really think they're going to relink unless one of these owners starts waving these players. A lot of these players ain't about to hand over their spot that easily to know Caitlin Clark. They can act it. They can fake it. They're not handing it over. And you can hear the pushback. Go listen to the WNBA players talk. And they and what they think is because, because they're a very lazy league with players that don't care to market themselves, what they're hoping for is they're hoping that as fans, we come over and watch everybody. Do you know how pissed off WNBA players are going to be? Once they realize that all these Iowa fans are only tuning in 
to Indiana Fever games. So the only team that's going to get a residual kickback from Caitlin Clark is the Indiana Fever, not the whole WNBA. It does not benefit the whole WNBA. Whoever, wherever Angel Reese goes, that team will get the benefit of an Angel Reese, not the whole WNBA. So all the Lexi Browns and all these other players running around, sneak distance, sneak shots, we don't care. Yeah, in, yeah, Phoenix Mercury, you might have Brittany Griner. She might have used to been able to dunk the basketball. That didn't impress us then. It ain't going to impress us now. We're not tuning in to go watch. Until y'all bring in one of these young guns that have the fame and notoriety from college, we don't care to tune in. So, Diana Tarasti, you pushing 40. It's over with. It's over with. It's time for you to go. Y'all keep, see, they, what they doing is, y'all saw what Diana Taurasi just said, what she just said about Caitlin Clark. We, we, we ain't trying to hear all that. We, we not, remember, Diana Taurasi, you had your time. See, Diana, Diana Taurasi hates the fact that she was more popular in college than she was in the WNBA. Because you came to a league that didn't want to push and propagate you. They didn't want to put you on front street. They don't like promoting the beefs. They don't like promoting the narratives that men love to discuss on these podcasts. They just want people to come watch and Oh, it's a good time, man. No, that's not why men watch. Men don't care about all that. Men want to pick a side. Men want to debate about something. They want to pick, you know, your team versus my team, your player versus my player. We like the David versus Goliath look. I want to see the super team narrative get put forth in the WNBA. That's why I said the WNBA needs to figure out a way to get Caitlin Clark on the Las Vegas Aces or the New York Liberty. Cre create villains. Create a team that we can hate. Create a team that everybody's going to love. Go make a fake. Go make a fake GOAT like the NBA did. The NBA wasn't even pushing GOAT conversations. They saw the opportunity. Make Jordan the GOAT. Uh, uh, one championship, that's it. Make him the go. It's going to stir storylines, controversy, and a lot of talk moving forward in the future. The WNBA ain't even came out with a, uh, the top 75 list. Who, the, who on the top 75 list? They ain't, they ain't give us nothing. They just want us to come watch. We don't watch because y'all can who. We watch because of narratives. But I told you, they're too stupid to realize it. I told you, the WNBA needs to let me run the WNBA for a year. I, and I said, I will do the job for free for one full year. But after I make the league successful, you got to pay me $5 million a year from that point forward. All you got to do is let me get a hold of the league. And see, Angel Reese says some stupid stuff, too. See, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how stupid. See, Angel Reese is already. She 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 must. I don't know what's got into her head. After she loses, right? After she loses, she's talking about. I'm going through so much, and people are targeting me, and and I, out of all the stuff she said, none of it really bothered me until she said this, y'all. She said. They trying to sexualize me. I said, stupid. You don't, you, you so stupid to realize that for one, you sexualize yourself, right? If you go look at her Facebook and IG page, you getting on Facebook and IG half naked sexualizes yourself. And the second point is a lot of your fan base is there because of that. You, you, you had to do that to garner more. You, she, is Angel Reese that stupid where she really thinks that men are just tuning in to watch her because she can get 15 rebounds versus other women? No, I'm not on no Whitlock mode. That's just a fact, Sniper. This is just all fact. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean that's not sex? Hold on, hold on, hold on. She, her social media is blown up because of it. She took off on social media once she started doing it. Now she's complaining 
because of all the racing messages she's probably getting. That's kind of what comes with it. No, 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 no. See, I, I, I'm only roasting the sexualized part. Don't attack that part of your fan base. Don't attack that part of your fan base because that's what you have to accept. That's what you have to accept if you're going to be a women's athlete. I'm going to give you an example. Look at Serena Williams. Do you really think Serena Williams honestly thought that a lot of men were tuning in because she was just really good at the game of tennis? She understood that there was another element of marketing to it. So you know what she did? Instead of pushing back against it, she said, I'm going to make my sh my skirts shorter. I'm going to make my tights tighter. I might even just put on the all black cat suit. You really think the black cat suit, she was wearing it because it was comfortable? Don't matter if she's a dominant athlete. Look, it's uh, let me let me tell you this right now. A sniper, a sniper nation is three dominant women's tennis players that are black right now. Name them. Since since since, since you were watching, since you were watching, not Serena, because you spelled her name wrong, because probably because you was looking at that black cat suit too hard, sniper nation, that you didn't even see how her name was spelled. Is Serena, not Serena. So it's S E. See, you looking at that black cat suit so hard, you didn't even know how her name was spelled. But since you was watching, because she was a dominant athlete, it's three dominant black women's tennis players right now. Tell me their names. Talk about talking about he was watching because she was dominant. How am I hating on her when I'm telling her the path? When I'm when I'm literally telling her the formula on how to transition this fame from college to the WNBA, as opposed to going into the WNBA and then relying on the WNBA to continue marketing you the same way women's the NCAA women have. They have, they won't. Look, everybody else named him, but 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 my guy Sniper. See, oh some oh he got him right there. He got Sloane Stevens, uh, Naomi Osaka, and he got Coco Golf. I get I, see some of y'all know it. Them are the hardcore ones. The, see the people that know it probably are my sports betters. See, the people that know it are my sports betters. See, that's another element, too. He says she should lean into it, but over sexualizing her, which is what she said. How? How? There's no that's you have to accept that talking head 87. That's just what comes with it. That's like a stripper running around talking about why are you over sexualizing me? No, no, no. That's what comes with it. And, and, and see that the best thing about Angel Reese is she has an element covered. This is see, this is this is an element that nobody will talk about. Angel Reese has an element of this covered that Caitlin Clark can never get to. We all know what that element is. See the the overless over overly sexualizing. That don't get afforded to everybody. The one thing that ain't going to ever happen to Caitlin Clark is she ain't ever going to be over sexualized. That's the pro that, that's the thing. So you got to you got to understand marketing and just understand this is just a part of the game. If 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 the WNBA and this is something that the WNBA has failed to tap into. See, because the WNBA is so caught up in the fact that they're trying to get men because the only way the league is going to blossom and turn into 
if they if they expect to get paid like men, they're going to have to find a way to cater to the male fan base. And the only way they start catering to the fan, the male fan base is you have to understand what drives men when they watch sports. Do they come watch just because we're talented? Or do we have to sell them something? Thanks, I mean, facts, I mean, but see, Eminem, that's another battle that Caitlin's going, Caitlin Clark's going to have to face when she goes to the next level. There's an element. So, so now, Caitlin Clark, when she goes to the next level, for her to impress male fans, she's going to have to be supremely nice on the basketball court. I mean, she's going to have to come out there and look like a combination of LeBron and Steph Curry. Because that one element, the element that players like um, Angel Reese have or even Cameron Brink, she can't never touch that element. Liz Cambage had that element. Tia Cooper had that element. Some people won't ever get that element because you can't just you can't just have that element and that's an element of marketing that you can utilize but we all know that won't ever get pushed that won't ever get pushed man i'm gonna drop the link man let's get some of you guys in here to cook on this topic like i said i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna skylar diggins had it i ain't gonna lie So, hold on. Let me drop this link. Let's see if we get y'all to cook on this. Because Kayla Clark, like I said, to me, she's she, she if, if things if things as is, talking head, I do agree. Juju got the whole package. I, I agree there. The talent, the marketability. She signed with big companies already. I give you that one right there. Um, let, let me drop this link. Let's get you guys in here to cook on this topic. He said, Liz is flawless. Boy, yeah, I mean, look, man. But, nah, look, and Aswan Williams, I don't think they have to go to that level, the, the, the bikini basketball. That, that, that's, 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 that's the extreme. You don't have to do all that. You just have to have the element, right? Just, just have accessibility to different parts of marketing. Like I said, there's certain parts of marketing that Caitlin Clark will never be able to touch. Like that 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 Victoria's Secret uh, partnership, okay, that ain't happening with no Caitlin Clark. That's over with. You know, so certain things is, you know, some certain things is over with. Man, salute Lamar, but that dude that said uh, Liz Cambridge is uh, flawless. He must got her only fan. What's up, Lamont? How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. What y'all? Well, I'll, I'll start the conversation by saying this, though. Um, fantastic women's tournament. Um, it was a lot of fun, and uh, it was uh, there was a lot of good matchups there. I'll just say that at the beginning. But I will say that the only way that the WNBA is going to succeed at this, they're going to need to really push these players to the moon if they're gonna if they're gonna have a chance to even thrive, and which means get these guys in the in the starting lineup for their teams and start promoting them as players. One of the reasons why I've I've been distant from the WNBA for so long is because one, their players they expect to watch they expect the viewers to watch them, but they don't promote themselves. They promote an agenda, and to me that's what drives away a lot of the viewers. And if you don't if, if you don't push these if you don't push these star players and show them and then show a different appeal to the to the uh to the male fan base, then you're not giving us a reason to watch them. And it's like they walk around try to pretend like, man, none of you guys want to watch this play because you don't attract you don't appeal to, to anything. Why do you think why do you think they've not been able to grow their fan base since the inception of the WNBA since ninety seven? I mean, this is ridiculous. So, but I just wish Kathleen Clark all the best. But she's going to go against a system where they're not going to give her any chances. It's like 
they're giving it's like an old school mindset like you got to work to get to your starting lineup like bitch i bitch you haven't done a damn thing since you've been in the WNBA. like a lot of these stars like the sue birds and the diana tarasis of the world y'all need to retire y'all the reason why the WNBA has not been able to grow not just the league itself it's because you're not promoting these these, you know, young ladies that are going to be at the, they're going to be the face of the league for a long time. That's well, my no, thing. I think, Mahari, I think the main thing is this. It's not that they have to promote them. If they want, see what Diana Taurasi and some of the older players in this league that, are, that, that nobody's come watch their entire career, what they need to understand is they need to come to realize the realization is that nobody's coming to watch us. Our time is over with. We've tried for years to get people to come watch and ain't nobody coming watch to watch us. Our time is up. So even if they have to lie to us, they need to be boosting up these new young players bigger than anybody. They need to be telling us that if they, even if they got a lie, similar to how nineties players was doing with Jordan talking about, they feared Jordan. They better, they have to be part of the reason why we come watch that by and the reason and the, we're going to come what they have to step aside and stop being in the way you cannot run around trying to propagate and try to say that oh they're gonna have to get through us to get their role to get to their starting job no 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 no. you need to get out the way diana tarosti right because we know that there's a lot you know she left a lot on the table with regards to marketing because because of her looks so that was up her game was nice, but it was never good enough to get men to come over there and watch. Your time is up. Hey, Next, Lamont, you know, it's time hey, for somebody else to come in. Yeah, I, uh, Lamont, I got one. I got one idea that I think I think Gilbert Arenas brought this up. I think in one of his shows. What if you put those, you know, players in the women's United States team, not like just to have them as have them like as as like marketing type of a. Uh, marketing type of players to try to present them on an international stage to really grow, you know, these players into bringing them into the WNBA, something you know, like that. He, he said, you need to put all of them on the USA team. Cameron Brink, uh, right. Leah Edwards, um, um, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. They all need to be on there. Everything that w the WNBA does, they need to make all these new players a part of. And the thing is, like, they shouldn't have to earn their way on to nothing at this. Right now, because of their notoriety and fandom, they've earned their way already. That's what they need. They, they've already done their part. They got, they brought the eyes. Now the rest of you women, get out the way. Ain't nobody coming to watch y'all. Whoever, whoever's on that USA team, I guarantee you it's five names that we don't know. Get up out of here. We ain't trying to watch you. Man, come on, man. But they don't know how to get out the way. That's the problem. Or they didn't go on to. Yep. Joe Bob, what's good? What's up, Lamar? How you living, man? I'm solid, man. How you feel? What what you got on this topic? Uh I'm I, I kind of agree with a couple of your points, you know, about the girls, you know, using their their looks to attract the guys and stuff, but I'm I'm not gonna lie, man. Caitlin really got people watching her play for not, obviously not her looks you know but for her game like that's what behind the back step back threes i i agree know, like i agree you know because I mean? so I men like it's, it's a lot of ways you can impress men to get them to watch and she found one of those niches that's know? what i'm saying is the WNBA can't get in the way and say nah. you got these players running around talking about Oh, she ain't gonna be able to do that in the WNBA. Well, y'all better make sure she can do it in the WNBA Fact. if y'all want us to keep watching. Fact. I'm talking about you better start throwing some games. You better get some scandals or something because if you want us to keep watching, she better go to the WNBA doing the same thing she's doing at Iowa. No lie, she needs thirty shots a game, I'm that, bro. Minimum. That, I'm minimum. firing you as a coach. I'm minimum. firing you as a coach if she ain't getting thirty shots. 30 shots like you got a, a street you can shoot whatever shot you want we don't give a as soon as you go over half court shoot that shit yeah if not we ain't tuning in t streets that was wild t streets t streets that bathroom. was wild because you bought a bathroom the bathroom is crazy <laughs> he says i'm conflicted with lamont's message no my message is she it, 
my message is this, Sniper Nation. If things stay as they are right now, she will be Adam Morrison because there's too many forces fighting against her in the WNBA to allow her to be great. That's the problem. Yeah, but she, do you think Adam Morrison had the game, Lamont? I think Caitlin. You know, no, 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 no. But, the see, WNBA, but, but what did they do with Adam Morrison? Adam had that time, they, they played Adam Morrison long enough to show us he was a bum. They gave him ample opportunity, just like they did with the Kwame Browns and Anthony Bennett's. But you're going to get on this court, and you're going to have to prove to us over the course of the next three years that you're a bum. You might not do it your first year. We're still going to push you to second year. You might not do it the second. We're still going to push you to third year. You're going to have to prove to us over a three. But see, the WNBA, because they don't develop players, if you are bad the first week of training camp, they're going to wave you, even if you're a lottery pick. That's how stupid they are. So, uh, I mean, they, they, they're not going to allow her to be great. They're already coming in telling her, oh, you can't do that in this league. Oh, you're going to have to earn your starting spot. No, she don't have to earn nothing. She just need to be the starter right out the gate. I don't, right. it ain't nothing. Whoever, like I said, whoever the starting point guard is for the Indiana Fever, I'm calling you into the office. I'm sorry, you waved. I mean, good, nice having you. You waved. We, you done. We got a new point guard in town, and she will play 30 minutes a game unless she, unless she tear both ACLs. Yo, what do you think about that, that big three off of five mil? She better not do it. Nah, she can't do it because you got to grow. You remember what I said? Remember what you just said, Joe Biden? Remember what you just said, Joe Biden? You just talked about her dominance is why men watched. Right. If she goes to the big three, she's yeah, going to look gonna, like an yeah. ultra bum. She's yeah, going to look like work. a super scrub. And now that dominance, and remember, all the other aspects of marketing that we talked about, the, the looks, and the, we ain't there to watch the looks. Nah. We were watch the game. We want to see like that Steph Curry style. And, and the thing is, the only thing that's gonna happen when she go to the big three is she go, they gonna light her ass up. They're gonna they score gonna her, gonna her ice her. She ain't never gonna <laughs> score, and she's gonna look like a complete bum. And so her marketability goes in the garbage can. She better stay away from the big three. Yeah, you ain't lying. She'll make that money up yeah. in somewhere else. She don't need that money. Right. Right. Lamont, so like like you, I don't know if you said it already, but you basically said like, um, if she gets drafted, she just needs to stay the hell away from the, you know, like the veterans and the WNBA because you can constantly see like the inner hatred they have, not just for Caitlin Clark, but just like the new generation of uh, possibly um, WNBA players who are in college now. No, you're right. No, what what I would do is I'm that waving them. Hate, right? Any uh, any pl any old player, I'm I see. There are player going to be players on other teams that are going to hate on her. Yeah, but, there's, yeah. but the team that gets Caitlin Clark, it's time to start waving all these old heads. All these, all these old heads talking about she got to earn her spot and, and she got to fight. No, 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 no. Ain't no, no, ain't no. This is, this is, we, we about to be complete. Like, there's not no equal opportunity once Caitlin Clark walks in. Right. If you're a yeah. point guard and Caitlin yeah. Clark walks in, you just screw. You who, just it's just over with. You just get up out. Of who gets the first pick in the W? Indiana. Indiana Fever. And do they have any veterans of that team, or that's just like a new rebuilding team? Somewhere? Don't matter. It don't. If they do <laughs> got some, they got a couple of veterans. When I'm looking at their roster, they got a couple of players. Like they got a girl that's like. Well, I'm not talking about veterans like that. I'm talking about like you know the veterans that be hating on her. Though, like I. I forgot, I don't don't know. matter. It don't matter. If you were, okay. if you a point guard on this team and you've been in the league over five years, you up out of here. It's you, your career is over with with the Indiana Fever. We got Caitlin Clark, and like I said, whether Caitlin Clark is good or not, she is playing 30, 35 minutes a game, and I'm definitely giving her thirty shots a game. Everybody else, get the hell out the way. Is she gonna have to prove to us that she? Because you already trash. So. Who cares if she's a bum? You just get, go go do it again in the draft. Go get another player. See if it works. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. I got a question for you, Lamont. If you were yeah. the commissioner of the WNBA, would you tell players like Tyana Rossi you just you, you need to retire like immediately? What would you nah, do? Nah. I mean, I don't I don't know if they could make them retire or anything, but but what I'm gonna do is I'm definitely putting a memo out to all teams. It's time to kill that noise around these new players coming around, because um, because because that's what's gonna save if the if the league is gonna get saved. It's gonna that's be because of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. 
And if they if they don't turn this into a bird versus magic, because the best thing about Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese is you have the black white dynamic. As much yep. as people don't want to act like that matters, it, it matters. did matter. There were a lot of people that were only cheering for Angel Reese because she was black. And there were a lot of people that are only cheering for Caitlin Clark because she was white. You have to accept that in sports. And it's, and it's a good thing. You just have to accept it and you have to market that. Then you have the, you know, then you have the teams. Right. You obviously gonna have fans of each teams, fans of each teams. So then you get those fans on each side. Um, then you look at her style of play and then you're going to get the sports betters invested in. So mm. you have to cater to every market that might want to watch. And you have to sell this like magic and bird. Um, okay. And if they don't sell it like magic and bird, they don't. They don't. Hey, so like what I'll do if I was like basically like either the coach or the um the GM or the president of the team of Indiana who got the first pick, or if I was the commissioner of the WNBA, I'll put her with players that she would um, basically have a great chemistry with um, that she won't have no problems with, you know, just like what you said, get them out of there as soon as possible, possible. But I'll definitely bring people in that could basically, you know, comfort her basically uh, won't give her no attitude and make her feel comfortable as possible. Like her teammates, like draft one of her teammates, like in the later rounds or something. Mm. Well, you know what they, uh, what the WNBA might need to do. Um, I'm looking at some of the cities right that have WNBA teams. Right, we got Atlanta, Chicago, um, New York, uh, Washington, Dallas, Las Vegas, LA. Like maybe they need to move some of these teams to like college towns or some shit. Cause right, like. If I'm living in LA, I'm not going to no fucking Sparks game. It's too I have too many <laughs> options, right? Like and when we see these I agree. Like, yeah, when we see these, you know, uh, I, I live in Dallas, right? I'm not going to no fucking uh wings. I just I didn't even know we had a team. Right? So I'm not going to a Dallas Wings game, right? I'll go watch hockey before I go to a WNBA game. But when we look at March Madness, right, and we see like these smaller towns who the fans look like they they starving for some you know for 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 sports. I think yep. maybe they need to move these teams out of these big ass cities that have four and five you know major league teams and move them to te- uh, yep. to cities that don't that don't have nothing teams. else to cheer for but yeah. the team. Right. And you know what? But you know what that also do too rebranding. Mm-hmm. It'll take these WNBA teams out of these big ass professional arenas and then they'll have to play in smaller arenas more like high school or college gyms college, right. where where it where even just for the camera look it'll look like the gym is packed out and the, yep. the arena is rocking yep. because it's just a smaller venue i think the one of the big wma's biggest problem is they play in the venues that are too big you i mean you look around the camera start panning around and all you see is empty seats and, and <laughs> right and man come on man and, and, and it could it could be a lot of people yeah. there but it's like you said like they're in a bigger arena so you move them to a smaller city that are craving fans, and we've seen March Madness, right? A lot of the games were hyped because I'm, I'm looking at the crowd, and you can hear the noise, right? Like the LSU game, and, like, you can hear the noise and shit, so it's like maybe they need to do that. Um, like Cameron Indoors would do. Cameron Indoors or Hinkle Fieldhouse where Butler plays, these are tiny. These are, as far as, like, big arenas go, they small, but when the camera's watching because of how packed in it looks and feels on camera, boy, it'd be looking, it'd be feeling like that place got – a hundred thousand people in there. Like when you listen to Cameron indoors where Duke plays, that's a small gym compared it to is. like yeah. it's small, but boy, it'd be sounding like it's if the TV make it look because it'd be so packed, they look crazy. That's what the the WB needs to recreate the college field. That's what they need to do. But and uh and hitman, so yeah, I like, I get that, right? But what I'm saying is like move them out of these major cities, like move them to Small towns and shit, and like, like you know, uh, it, it, I agree. Agree. yeah, because if you're yep. gonna, I'm gonna rebrand it. That might be one of the best ideas I've heard. I ain't gonna lie, no, I have no. not heard that idea yet, man. I ain't expected to come and, from you, man. <laughs> Calm down, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, right? So, um, and when you think about it, right? Like, so you have players that are coming out of these small college towns and shit, the fans are going to be more invested, right? Because they're like, you know, that's just a homegrown kid. Um, so I mean, what. I think I think they need to really look at that, and however they can make it happen, make the shit happen. But that's all I got. No, I you know what though? That's that's not a bad idea at all. I mean, I could see you. I would I would rather move the Sparks to another team somewhere else, yeah. and then also move the Liberty somewhere else too. To be honest with you, like like playing in, in those big arenas like Madison Square Garden, and then playing in that uh, crypto arena, 
It's like when you watch a when you watch a sparse game. I've seen it, for example, it's rarely even filled. There's like there's a lot of empty seats there, and even in Target Center, in Minneapolis too. Even when the even when the Lynx were winning championships, the arenas were barely even packed. Yeah, like if you you live in New York City, like are you going to like are you going to a Liberty game? Or are you like fucking? I'm going to a Knicks game. I'm going to a Nets game. Shit, like, the Rangers, the Islanders. Yeah, like it's Yankees. Not many options. And that's and that's the point though. For me, that's the point. What the point that Rebrandon just said? But see, you said that you going to a Knicks game. Yeah, the Knicks been trash for years. The people still go to their game. Yeah, they got history, but Mingo, they got history that they can invest in, right? Like even Madison Square Garden, when stars go to Madison Square Garden for the first time, that shit like Rutgers, like. Yo, how many points you gonna score here, right? Like, like Lamont was saying, we don't, we, we really don't know the history of the WNBA. I can't tell you who was a lockdown defender. I can't tell you who's the Kawhi Leonard. I can't mm. tell you who had historic shots like Jordan and against Utah or you know what I'm saying, Kyrie against Golden State. I can't tell you this, right? And it's and it it it. I think with what we're seeing, right, in uh the college the college game. We're seeing a lot of potential, right? Like somebody mentioned Juju Watkins. We're seeing people that have potential to be the faces of the league, right? But we got to stop these older people that are already in the WNBA from hating. Like y'all, y'all speaking down on a sport, and I guess you got your money already, so you don't really give a fuck about the sport once you leave. But you got to think about the sport when other people are coming into it. So, you know, um, I don't know. But I, but I agree with Lamont though. That that might be one of the best ideas I've heard too. That's definitely a good idea, though. Overall, that's a good idea, though. Oh, for mm. sure. You got to, though, man. You got, like I said, you put them somewhere exclusive, where people don't got that many options. And the one thing that has been proven, like even in Indiana, check this out, because there's a team called the um, Indianapolis Ice, because they don't have a competing professional NHL team. This any this Indianapolis Ice team can damn near sell out every time they go play because they the only hockey thing related in the entire state. If you want to go watch some hockey, this is the only team you, so they got the, they got a hundred percent market share on hockey because they don't, then they're not competing with all these other things. And then when you're in Indiana, ain't much else to do any anyway. Um, so, I mean, I think you might be right on that one right there. They, they got to yeah. get these teams out of these big cities, man. Especially, especially LA. LA got way too many teams. When I say Bags. way too many, I mean way too many teams. Because people would rather go to a baseball game any day. And an NFL game, too. Remember, you, are, you already added two, two NFL teams with the Chargers and the Rams. Like, they're all, they're already overcrowded with teams. And then also the other Oakland teams are already moving out. So you don't really need a WNBA team in that area at all. <laughs> you, got a gajillion, you got a kajillion baseball teams. You get the Padres. Padres, uh, yeah, Dodgers, Dodgers, Giants. I mean, you got, Dodgers, so you got baseball Angels, games galore and everything. Angels. Like yeah, they're, that that's they're what I'm saying though. Sense. Like if you it listen, I think for the WNBA to grow, they're gonna have to start small. They're gonna have to really start looking into these small, you know, towns and start building up that fan base over there. You may not it may not be the biggest arenas that you could play in. But I guarantee you a lot of the local fans will come in and watch you play and then it will sell out. I guarantee you that. That's a start. Yeah. But let I, me ask you a question, though, Lamont. Let me ask you a question, though. Uh, what What were some things about uh, Angel Reese, about her game, do you think that she needs to work on if she's going to be a, a dominant player? What do you think? Well, you got to – like, so Angel Reese looks – her like, if you watch, if you look at her talent, like, I think she only went to the WNBA because she was burnt out on college. Um, and you could kind of sense it this year. She was just kind of burnt out on the college life. And mm -hmm. her game hasn't caught up yet. So she's really going to need to go to a team that's going to want to take time to not just play her, but also develop her. Sure, she, her, she, she got to be able to shoot because that's one of the reasons why they couldn't compete against Iowa because she can't score unless she's right under the rim. She can't shoot a jump shot. I mean, she's not, I don't even think she's at the free throw line range yet. As far as shooting mid ranges, um, so she has to develop her game. I don't. I think she has a horrible handle as far as being able to dribble at her size at the in the WNBA. It's guards her size, um, so she's gonna have to have a better handle. And I think she needs just physically, she needs to get stronger. So I don't think she's strong enough. So 
she she's going to have to go to a team where they're going to have to say, we know you're not ready. We're still going to play you, but we're also going to develop you. But is there that, that's just hasn't been how the WNBA operates. They don't right. operate that way for whatever reason. So it's crazy. Right, right. See, I, I look at I look at uh, Kathleen Clark's game more of intense of uh, I don't know. Adam mm-hmm. Morrison may not be might be my kind. I look at her as kind of like a like a Christian Leitner in my way, not with the <laughs> attitude and all, but I'm saying in terms of like you know her her game in terms of like you know her her, her you know dominating what she was what her, her competition was there for, her, but you know I don't know. That's my that's just my thing. Well, it's gonna be sad that they're gonna find out that she didn't win a W. I mean, she didn't win a uh, NCAA championship four years at Iowa. That's gonna be I'm very gonna be on- disappointing. Well, I'll be honest with you, man. Like the Big Ten as a whole, because obviously living in Minnesota, I'm it's Big Ten country. But the 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 Big Ten as a whole, other than the men's side, but the women's side when it comes to basketball wasn't really wasn't really that wasn't really that difficult to be honest with you. Like normally, I mean, normally in the Big Ten there would be some good teams in the mix, but I just thought that this year it was kind of watered down a, a, a bit. But I will say this though, Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin, she done broke every, when I say every, she done broke by every NCAA scoring record that it is to break. Now, right. she do have that to her name, and she yeah, do yeah, have but, that. But she broke the, so the thing is, the record, breaking the record is impressive, and I and I get that. But it's, it's hard for me to just look at it and just act like that's, it's just this most legitimate record because they, at Iowa, they just never played any real comp. Right. I mean, you're talking about a ton of games against very soft competition. Like when I could, if you just look at UConn's or LSU's or South Carolina's schedule compared to Iowa's, we ain't like if you put Iowa in the same conference with South Carolina, we're not having this same conversation. I don't believe. I promise. You, I don't think we're having it. So, I mean, yeah, the numbers are good and great and all, but the one of the reasons why. A lot of the top, like if you look at a lot of the top scores in NCAA history, there's a reason why a lot of them don't translate well to pros, men or women, men or women. Right. So because well, because a lot of times do you get those numbers because you're playing soft competition in soft right. conferences. Well, here's the thing, though, too. The one thing that I had issues with, you know, Kathleen Carker in terms of her game was that she was sometimes she sometimes stacked up, you know, a lot of three point shots from way outside, which most times went in, but anytime that she kind of like dribbled into the paint or try to, you know, get into the scenes to make a pass, she didn't have like a pull up mid range type of a jump shot or something to really keep the defense honest where she could break their defender down, which she can do easily, but also can hit the little floater or mid range jump I mean, shot. She could, she could work on that. Can't she know? Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, she, she can work on that, but I'm saying that's one of the things I noticed yeah. when I was watching her play where she she would beat her defender, but then all of a sudden when she dribbles, she would either over dribble into traffic or make an unnecessary pass, you know what I mean, or just hey. kick the ball out. Like you know if she did. had like a one, drib- one dribble pull up from the free throw line, that could have opened up a lot of different dimensions in her oh, game. Oh, you talking about Caitlin Clark? Caitlin. Yeah, yeah. But see, the one thing about Caitlin though, Kate, Caitlin got that range for one. Caitlin yeah, range, that's is crazy. her range is crazy. But also, she do have a little pull up. It's not as good as like some, you know, NBA play, like NCAA players. But it's decent. But it's not really good. But uh, her script is a long ball like Steph. I ain't saying she on the level of shooting like Steph, but I'm saying her her long ball is her bread and butter for her game, like Steph's hey, on. Hey, I like I like Caitlin. You know what I'm saying? And I think she's going to be successful. But I think we, like, a lot of people really need to talk about that job Raven Johnson uh, did on her in that second half. Like, oh, that second half, boy, it's just yeah, like listen. something. That was yeah, a fantastic yeah, yeah. And look, and, and we granted, what made it worse is that was just you versus me. That was a lot of just you and yeah, me defense. But, Ain't no yeah, help. Girl, the handcuffs. Yep. Yeah, yep. that was. A lot of people, because I hit, um, I was on Twitter, and I'm, like, scrolling. I'm like, oh, they got personal shit, like. A lot of people may not remember that uh, Caitlin Clark waved her off last year when she was wide open at the three. Caitlin Clark didn't even try to go out to close out on her. She waved her off. So 
what that tells me, the way she was playing defense today was like she took that personal. You That's know, right. We need, we need dogs like that. Like I, I, dogs translate across any sport. You know, so I, I, I really think a lot of people need to, you know, focus on what Raven Johnson did, the job that she did. Um, well, what? Yeah. So you said, mm-hmm. Kelly? Okay, never mind. Well, she got them two steals at the end of the first half. Yeah. Yes. I said, you don't see that, especially because Kayla Clark got a decent handle. I said, you don't see that too much. I said, she got her twice before the half ended. I said, yeah, they own one. I said, yeah, no, they yeah. losing this one. I said, you they know, not losing you, this one. You know, the scary part about it is that when you're able to defend without any help, that basically, that's basically opens up a different dimension of defense. Man, she like, was moving her feet so beautifully. She was, like, dog, yes. I was like, yo, she's clapping her. Yep. But every time Caitlin got that switch, that's when you could tell that she got that confidence back. Like, whenever she would get a successful switch and Raven wasn't on her, guarding her, man, she mm-hmm. man, she looked yep. to go to town. I was just kind of shocked that that they beat UConn, first of all. I was actually shocked that I would beat UConn. And, and listen, and listen, and that was a moving pick, by the way. Like, I don't care what it was. Say. It was. It was it a was moving a pick. pick. It, it was. was. Yeah, yeah, but look, but you got to realize, like, so – when you play basketball, the one thing you have to understand is that all not all picks are clean. Like if you watch the game today, both teams were setting a ton of what you would call normally moving screens. You know, uh, uh, um, Camilla does it all the time. And, and this thing is, it's just that was just a call where you got to let it ride. Hold on, we got to let we got to let my man pull up, man, and, and get his take on there, man. What's good, Gil, man? What you got on this, man? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, where you at? Where y'all at on it, man? We just, it just, we just, uh, oh, man. Really, obviously, my comparison was: I said if the NBA and the WNBA don't make major changes, I'm talking about major changes with the how they are being more accepting of these new players. Kaitlyn Clark is just gonna be Adam Morrison on the next level if the WNBA don't step in and make sure she's the great. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Morris a lot. <laughs> I, think that, I think that's why I too I started laughing. Adam Morrison is crazy. Like, no, you know, uh the right. different the, the difference is she she can't survive. The reason she, she can survive because she does have a slingshot from far. Now that means because she can shoot so far away from the defense, um most of her shots will come up before she even get to a defender. Now you have to guard her from damn near half court. Now pick and rolls. Now she has more room to move and maneuver. So she she's going to gain a lot of space just because she has a flamethrower from damn near right before half court. So that opens up the game a lot more. So nobody's going to be sitting at the uh, three-point line. I'm, they're going to start off sitting at the, the college street, and she's going to be pulling up early. But – the WNBA does need to change their, their format um, like the NBA did, right? The NBA did it. You know, when those young guys, the Kobe's and all of them were coming in, they got rid of those old heads. Yep. They don't, we don't care about your opinion. We don't, you know what I mean? We, 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 it's, it's a new era. We're going to come in. We're going to change it, and it's going to be for them, right? And, you know, like girls like uh, Diana Taurasi, um, some of those older older girls, y'all had 20 years to uh, make an imprint on this game. It hasn't improved since y'all had it. So, therefore, we don't care what you're talking about here. When them two play against each other, it's going to be damn near that Allen Iverson versus Jordan matchup. I'm purposely trying to embarrass Tarasi with the referee calls, get her fouled out of the game, whatever. But I'm gonna make sure my new talent looks better. Mm-hmm. That is that, that you know that's the that's the point of it. Like no one's going to see Tarasi at this point. There's not gonna be if the, the game is sold out. It's not sold out because Tarasi is going to be sold out because of Kaylin Clark. So I need her to look great. That kind can of I ask you? Can I ask a question real quick? Uh huh. Okay, so I remember when you were talking about. Uh, you were saying you were saying that you would you would rather have those young players from college have them on the USA team, kind of like how you put Melo, D Wade, and LeBron in the 04 USA team to try to promote those guys into your league. Would that be a smart way to do it? Yes, that's that's a perfect way to do it. Uh, I would put them on the team, 
um, all those young girls, even if you don't have a plan, you, you should have enough talent in your starting seven uh, to jeopardize four girls. And if you do have to put them in, they, they're going to manage, right? They've won, they're gold medalists. You know, Caitlin Clark is 19 and under gold medalist. Uh, Paige Becker has won a gold medal. Angel Reese, I think she won a gold medal last year or a FIBA medal. Um, yeah, put those girls on there. So you can print their jerseys now. That means if you put Juju and Paige Beckner's USA jersey for sale, you're selling her jersey now before she even steps in your league, which gives her a fan base also. Create that fan base and that buzz now before your season starts with them and the younger guys and the younger girls coming in. It's smart. It's marketing. Like, Oh, these girls need to deserve it. There's no such thing as deserving it. Do y'all want? Do y'all want to deserve it? Do y'all want more money? If you want more money, then shut up and move to the side because <laughs> we we got we got some people who's gonna bring in the income. Mm-hmm. The, the income the incomes come from the youth, right? Like Caitlin Clark, all these girls nil deals is college deals, right? So yeah. why why are companies touching the college girls and not touching the pros? Nobody because nobody's more, my bad, my huh? bad. Because they have yeah, more of a fan base and the college yeah. tends to um because they look yeah. more like girls too. When you're when you're when you're <laughs> Hey, y'all, look, it's just a reality. Yeah, but, <laughs> not, not, you, but you see what I'm saying, though? Like, a friend, like Juju, Juju still looks like a young lady, right? Paige still looks like a young lady. Angel mm-hmm. Reese, obviously, she's 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 dressing up like a – Kaylin, it's more of her yeah, game in a sense. South Carolina got some fire, look. Like, but, they got some fire drawn yeah, on their team. That's but real. but for, the yeah. mo- for the most part, when you're talking about – 18, 19, they haven't figured out their sexuality yet, right? Um, so they're still dressing as young, young, young ladies. Once you get 22 and you're, you know, 23 and you're a senior coming out, you're a woman. You're you're not necessarily, you're not, you you've picked what side you want to be on. So most of those girls at 22, they're they're gonna have the tattoos, they're gonna already cut their hair. You know, when they're coming to the W, it's hard to it's hard to market that to the youth because the youth, that's, they have not seen that yet. That's not their identity yet. Like most youth girls are still trying to wear, they're wearing makeup, lip gloss in games. They want the shorts. They want the yeah. short shorts. Like they yeah. want to roll, like those are the high school girls, college freshmen, they're rolling their shorts up still two, trying two, to show their thighs. Yeah, yeah tr- trying to show their thighs because the young boys is doing it in high school and they're trying to impress each other. Hey, the more you ever told Gil that idea that we came up with um, the last show we did. What's that? I forgot. You know that. Uh, you you know that big three. Uh, he got he got. Oh job. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, look. no 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 no. I did tell him that. No, but no. The, the idea was if 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 the W if the WNBA. Like the only the only way I think the big three idea works is if they um fake it and have her going out there cooking men. Because they can't have her going out there really playing against men, not real basketball. But you gotta you gotta fake it and make her look nice against men if you really want it to pan out and work in favor of the WNBA. Otherwise, it's just gonna backfire. And then not- listen, there's no way in hell that she's gonna go out in a big three and play against Will Bynum's and uh, Joe, uh Jamal Crawford's and shit like this. Like Nick Young couldn't even hang out there with them dudes. All right, that this ain't like this ain't she can't beat Iowa men, let alone real professional <laughs> NBA players, motherfuckers like McCants. You think she's gonna go out there and cook a dude like McCants in a big three? You think somebody like McCann's gives a shit about who she is? He gonna close. He gonna close line her just for the thought. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's crazy, man. Oh, that's crazy. You know what Shaq's gonna y'all, do? Y'all, y'all, y'all like, think they're a little cook for the right bag, though. Uh, the the, right dude, bag the dudes ain't. Go, what I'm saying is the dudes ain't. Go, okay, one. Let me just cut it. 
they ain't no five million dollars. Dog, that whole league, the 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 <laughs> the captains, the number one captains, the main captains, this is how their deals is done. The main captains, they get eight grand if they win. So it's like so it's seven grand. Eight mm -hmm. if they win, six if they lose. That's the main guy. Then the two under him, like the two second captains, they get six grand, seven if they win, five. The the, the rest of the draft mm -hmm. picks. They get five regular, six if they win, four if they lose per get per week. So you're saying she's gonna come in there and get six hundred thousand per game? What, what you you ain't got that kind of money? I'm gonna just be honest with you. You don't think you don't think he could find that money though? Where's Ice Cube gonna get that money? You can, you can put look. The like, league don't know how to something. The league don't know how to make money yet. They don't know how to make. So what, what the problem is this. It's not Cube. Cube is, he's a basketball fan trying to create a league for basketball players. It was his partner that didn't know nothing. And his partner's going in there trying to make deals and just rubbing people the wrong way, right? Which kind of like tainted Cube's name from business and stuff. It's it's not Cube. Cube's standing on 1,000% with the, the Oh, he went out or was it me? Yeah, he went out. Yeah, he went out. Yeah, he went out. Yeah. Nah, but somebody in the, somebody in the, but somebody in the chat, uh, there's the barber call. Oh, he's, he's back, he's back, he's back. Right, can you hear me? I said, I said, uh, the big three, the big three don't have a TV deal. They don't? No, they, <laughs> they, they, they pay CBS $2 million. Leslie Brown and cut that man Wi Fi. Hello, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, pause, pause. Can you hear me? They paying them two million dollars. No, he good now. He should be good. They paying them two million, yeah, yeah. two million dollars. That's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, they they yeah they pay CBS two million dollars to be on CBS. So CBS don't pay them because when I got there, I was trying to I was with Fubo and Fubo's linear, and I had a deal <laughs> where them and Fubo can leak up. Fubo give them cash. I think it would be smart if Ice Cube could find that money. Hold on, rebranding. I said, Fubo can give them cash, and then they can be on linear. And it was like, now nah, we want CBS. And it's like, because they want the national recognition, but they're paying CBS. So what they do is they got to find funding every year, right? So let's say they, they go out and raise $7 million. $7 million goes to $2 million goes to CBS, then $5 million goes to the salaries, booking tickets, and all that stuff. That have you Man, y'all know he driving, so she probably yeah, ain't driving. Him. That's crazy. I did I mean, not know that. Bro. I did not. I never heard I no shit like that. that. Like, like yeah, somebody paying two million dollars just to be on the neck. I mean, that league. That's wild. Bankroll. I ain't never heard that before. That's crazy. That's not. That's not surprising. Is it? Hello. No, we hear you. You back now, Gil? Yeah. Yeah, I was said halfway through the season every year they're gonna cut half the teams to get ready to uh to get rid of their salary because they can't afford all the teams all the way through. So mm. they run out of they run out of the, their money every year. Jesus. So you gotta find they gotta find they gotta keep finding somebody that's gonna keep putting money in. So they basically like the double NBA but just in a different way. Yes, they actually are the WNBA <laughs> in a different way. They don't know they they don't know they don't know how to be profitable. It's hard in the beginning, though. Like you gotta understand, man, and you gotta find your own niche. Yeah, hey, listen, this is this is what happened. I gave them dudes uh, uh, a bulletproof. I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm the one who had half the league cut because he was paying. He was paying players. He was paying players um, that wasn't even playing, giving them guaranteed 120 thousand. So I had to look through their contracts and see half the deal. So they cut half the league when I first got there. Um, and then I said, you should separate them. Because when I got there, I had my own team. I had my own mascot. And I had um, I had, a, I had my own team, mascot. I had my own social media. So I was the only guy with his own social media. And I was basically saying, 
this is how it should be. Every team should run on its own, right? Let the players pay the players themselves. So I fund my own team so I can go out there and get my own marketing and get my own dollars. And you guys don't have to worry about every team itself. So that means you guys get to keep more money and all you guys got to do is like pay for like hotels or something. But when it comes to paying the salaries and stuff, you guys didn't have to do it because we, but they didn't want to get rid of, they wanted ownership of all the teams still. Like Corey Maggetti wanted a team. So you had like six players that wanted their, wanted teams and you would have sold them right there. Mm. But they didn't, they didn't do it. So it kind of like. That's bad business right there. That's bad business. Now, I, I get it. They, they didn't know what they had. So before, before they, before it all like, I, I guess it's easier to f- now for me to say, well, they should have sold back then. You know, you got a league, it's moving, and keeping one hundred percent of it makes more sense. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, I get it from both sides, but man, ooh, man, it yeah. seems like they missed the ball on that one. Yeah, like the WNBA too. They're gonna. This is a time where you have to sit there and watch what the NBA did. And then realize that, you know, when, you know how we watch, why ain't Melo in the league? Why Jamal Crawford in the league? Because someone 18, 19, they what? Right? That 18 and 19, that's what they want. They want them young kids, right? They want them young kids. Like somebody's going to pick Eden, right? Somebody's going to pick him just for some of those Purdue fans. But that draft is going to, the beginning of that draft is going to be 18 and 19 rows getting drafted. I agree. That's uh, what I said. Yeah, I think Edie's going to slip in the draft. I, I I got him going beginning of the second, end of the first. Yeah, no, that, I mean that's where no, that's where the mock that's where the mock draft has him. That that's why I was weird. I was like, damn, this player of the year two years in a row, and they got his ass thirty. Shit, that's crazy. But, it, it's not. It's not in. The, it's not in a sense. It, it's that the game. He's not fast enough to stay on the floor. Like. Like when the Purdue comes down, they have to slow the ball down for him to spot his ass down there and get in the post. These guards ain't waiting for that shit. <laughs> you see, listen, you see how they was treating Wimby? Shit, that's the number one pick. You better. They don't want to throw him the ball, let alone shit. Someone that's that slow. Mm-hmm. He might that motherfucker might as well just play defense because you ain't getting that ball on offense, goddammit. I can tell you that. <laughs> 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 hey, Gil. Hey, Gil. How good a pros you think uh, Kayla Clark and Andrew Reese would be in the WNBA? Um, I think it would be easier for Caitlin uh, than it would be for Angel. Uh, Angel doesn't have um, – he plays hard. He doesn't have a skill yet. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, if you look at her in that them games and she tries to make layups, she don't, she don't, she don't have the fundamentals. She don't she'd be she, out of control all the time. Yeah, she, yeah, she she plays like a girl, right? You know what I mean? Um, and she's gonna need to develop like a, a go-to move and a secondary move. You know, um, within the next thirty days, they'd be some type of effective offensively. You know, in the W, but you know, just being a big body, uh, she'll be fine. Um, she's gonna be more of like a rebounder type. Early, you know, try to play defense, rebounding her before she can really start demanding that ball. Uh, Kaylin, she's a guard, right? You know, you know, have them big girls out there come pick and roll. She run around, shit. Remember, she 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 can shoot the ball fast. You know, you know, like Steph, shooters like that. No one is like a. You watch MMA and you watch uh, boxing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bo- yeah, boxers. Yeah. Bo- the defense is more like MMA style, right? They're, they play defense with their hands down, right? They're like this, right? They're playing They're playing like this. By the time she shoots and releases, let me just put my goddamn backpack on, uh, <laughs> right? So she, you know, she plays, they play defense like this. Well, by the time she takes that shot, you, you're reacting late, right? That's, that's MMA, right? Boxers usually keep their hands up. Defense is defense is the MMA of of basketball. They want to guard for the crossover. You know that's where their hands are. So she coming down and then deciding to pull is always going to be um, mm. 
a late reaction to her shot. So she's going to get her shot off. That That's not going to be the issue. Like, people who can shoot, they're going to find a way, especially, like, her shit is always loaded. So I'm, I I think she's going to be fine. And then if I'm the fever, um, my offense is designed just for her. Yeah. Y'all going, you, you mother, I'm going to have a whole bunch of Draymond Greens in this bitch. <laughs> set, set picks, give it to her, rolls, re-give it to her. <laughs> like, 30 shots fuck? a game. We just said that. 30, 30 a yeah, game. Yeah. Minimum. Don't give the a, fans is going to be there to see her. Yeah, she doubled the ticket price. I don't give a fuck about the people that's in here. I can trade y'all. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm serious. I it's don't. business, though. It's business. I'm saying it's a, it's a business. Like uh, I, she, y'all was here. No matter how good y'all were, they didn't come to see you. The thought of her doubled the prices, which means the game, our style, is for her. Yeah. So whoever she don't like, y'all are getting the fuck on out of here. <laughs> First one, first, hey, first player to look her off, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we're not, but what I'm saying is, we're not even setting the tone. Hey, okay, this is a, a true story. Y- y'all remember that clip where it's going viral a little bit, where Kobe's uh, Shaq said he he uh, he did something to Kobe one time, and the FBI was after him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. I seen that. It, it, it yeah. wasn't the it wasn't the real FBI. <laughs> right, yeah, it was magic. upper management. Jerry it was West. the upper manager. Yeah, what happened is, uh, something happened where he pranked Kobe. Kobe didn't like him. Right, this is Kobe as a rookie, mm. and and Kobe didn't like it. And Kobe was like, "Hey, I don't, I, I don't want to play with him. I, can y'all trade me?" That freaked them the fuck out. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! Relax, Kobe. Relax. The nigga who airballing, the nigga who's coming off the bench. They had to go, everybody had to go to sit down with Shaq and say, hold on, you cannot touch him. You cannot do nothing to him. We don't even want you talking to him like that. Because they already knew he was the future. He was, he was basically, he was protected from the first day he got there. Why you think they got rid of Eddie Jones? Eddie Jones is all-star. Hey, we're going to have to move you out. He's almost, re- he's almost ready. He's almost ready to take on this this role, but that but that's that's how it is. I don't I don't have room if I'm fever to have my to have these girls not liking my future. It's my future, mm. and that'd be the conversation from the beginning. Hey, this this is her team. Whoever don't like it, let me know where you don't want to go so I can send you there. And to be mm-hmm. honest, Gil, the WNBA can miss this opportunity, though. They got to capitalize because they, they they dropped the ball on a lot of the good players that they could have pushed, elevated the league in, in the past. So they got to take advantage of the Caitlin Clark situation. If they don't, I think the league will be over with. It's the last game. They don't, they, don't know how to, they don't know how to take advantage of it because they, they, um, they still think that we should watch them for their talent. Yeah. As long <laughs> as as long as they still think watch us for our talent, they're gonna always be exactly where they are because the male audience don't we, we have a certain way that we want to see things, right? If we think you're sexy, we're gonna watch just because you're sexy. If you don't know what you if you don't want us to watch for that, then we won't watch. There you go. I'm sorry. I mean, and, you know. Like we 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 we, as long as you're sexy, you you can miss fifteen layups in a row. We don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> now now if you want us, now if you want us to evaluate you for your talent, you missing uh, fifteen uh, fifteen layups. Get the fuck on off the court. Get your sorry ass off the court. <laughs> Shit, the fuck. Oh look, hey, I about I got to get into this little event. But right, it was nice talking to y'all, boys. All right, yes, yeah. yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Lamont, you mind? Yeah. Because uh, I got to get up out of here. You mind if we make the announcement real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, because I got to shut this one down. So go ahead and right, let cool, the people cool, know, cool. man. So uh, we appreciate y'all, you know, tuning in. Um, just would like to announce that, you know, we kind of into the partnership with Lamont uh, here at FYF. So we will be coming out with a show every Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. 
Um, and we put together a, a cool cast. I think, you know, everybody I, I like. Um, so it will have, you know, my dog Herm. It will have Sturdy, True to King, Young Africa, Maria, H from the UK. Um, am I missing anybody? And myself. Um, we're just going to do, a, you know, we're just going to put together a show. We're talking about sports. So, like, we're not really doing the whole narrative base. We're going to lead that to those guys <laughs> over there that want to do the narratives. And, um, you know, y'all know who they are. So, um, over here, I think we want to have fun with it. Uh, we want to give y'all some consistency every week. Um, I think, you know, we like what, what Lamont doing over here with FYF. And, you know, he extended the opportunity. And I think we want to execute and um, get y'all something good over here. So, make sure y'all tune in Saturdays, 5 p.m. Eastern time to 7 p.m. And, What's the uh, name? You gotta let them know the show oh, name, yeah, man. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So it's gonna be called the crossover. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna be talking all sports. Um, right now, basketball is a big thing, so you probably can expect a lot of basketball talk right now. Um, as we start to switch into different sports, we will, you know, switch into you know, different sports. So once again, Lamont, we appreciate you. Uh, Herm, you got anything you want to say? Herm, you on mute. Oh, uh, yeah, so this is her from Memphis. Oh, <laughs> uh, I just want to say this, man. Uh, yeah, I hear man. me, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. man. <laughs> nah, but, uh, but to add on to it, y'all, man, this going to be, we going to be talking from the love of the game, love for every sport that, that we talk about, man. It's, it's not going to be narrative driven. It might be some trolling here and there. You guys going to see some disagreements amongst the crew. Uh, and we will let some people come on if they have questions or if they want to debunk anything that we may be talking about um, in that instant. But, but I, it's a good group of guys uh, and, and, and women. Uh, you guys go hear from a woman perspective as well. Um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great content, you guys, man. Y'all just tune in, support us. It's going to be very entertaining. Uh, like I said, you got a mixture of everything that you need on one show. And you got it with this crew here. So, man, y'all tune in. I most definitely support. Man, we appreciate FYF um, for backing us and supporting us with this op- and giving us this opportunity. And we going to make you guys proud, man. Y'all going to like this show. It's going to change the game up on YouTube. I'm telling y'all that now. So, man, oh, y'all hey, tune hey, in. Hey, hey. hey what's name, up? What's one up? Name. One more name. My bad. My dog, Casual. The Casual will be a part of it as well. Maria is going to be a part of it. Um Real nice cast, yo. And uh, we've been building over here at FYF already. So we, you know, talked on the back end. Everybody got a respect for each other. And we think we can put something together. Like, that's, you know, going to be cool over here. So, for sure. Well, go ahead, Herm. My bad. So, that start this Saturday, right? <laughs> yeah, this, this Saturday, Saturday uh, yeah, 5 p.m. Saturday. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Saturday. So, yeah, I'm going to make sure I'm going I'm to drop that. I definitely will be tuning in, in, dog. I definitely will be tuning in. Man, we appreciate yeah. that. We appreciate so, what's that it stuff. called? The crossover, you said? Yeah, crossover, the crossover. crossover. Oh, okay, I'm 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 gonna check it out. Well, we appreciate that. We appreciate that. You know, y'all gonna hear me be able to cook Herm. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> he like to troll and shit. You know, I'm gonna cook Herm up a few times. It's nothing personal though. No, we got it, man. Hey, y'all, appreciate know, it. Y'all, y'all know Herm is one of the best debaters, period, on FIL sports. So you know, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a tall task for rebranded to do that. But you know, it, you know, y'all tune in. Y'all make hey, it to and this, this Sunday, y'all, it could. So we got our national. So just like we had the NCAA tournament this this weekend, we got our national tournament next weekend. So so next Sunday, if we if we make it all the way through, we hopefully can get the national championship game for my league. We can get it live on FYF Sports. So it's gonna be another grind. But you know, we got a team this year where. <laughs> I mean, if I lose this year, I'm, I'm damn near looking like the 2011 uh, Miami Heat, man. So, uh, so. Nah, good luck, though. Good luck for sure. <laughs> so, we got it. Yeah, you got it, you got, you got a Lamont, man. Y'all got it this year. Hey, Lamont, don't go out there acting like Lamont Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Lamont, if you stick up the joint, you know me and LVZ going to be all over your ass. Hey, look, I won't see. I won't. I won't. I'm, I'm going to give. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give Sturdy. I'm going to make sure we can do it. I'm gonna give Sturdy the link to the live to, so we can live stream the game. Cause I want I want y'all to be able to tell me if if I'm not practicing what I preach, the, the things that I say, the style of play, the de- obviously we got a defensive team. We defense first, man. We don't give we don't give up nothing. So y'all can see if I'm capping, man, or not. So uh, good luck though, for real though, man. Nah, good luck though, man. Good we luck, gonna find out. Sure. It's gonna be a good one this year. I got I got a good feeling about it though. I got a good feeling. 
All right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead. Make sure y'all also um just so y'all know. Um, if y'all don't follow Gil, man, no chill Gil. He's going live right now from his channel, man, over at a special event with underdog sports on top golf. So if you're not subscribed to his channel, not Gil's Arena, but his personal channel, No Chill Gil. I want y'all to go check out his live, man. So he going he about to go live right now. No chill Gil, man. And I've been doing a lot of stuff with him, man. So hopefully, man, I can get something going on with Gil, man, where we can get him over here uh at least once a week man to cook on something man so I'm, I'm i've been trying to work on stuff as time goes man trying to figure stuff out um you know doing a lot of work with other content creators um but it's gonna be hard to after this week i promise you after this week we're gonna get the lives back going we're gonna get you know i got no we got fontaine got a show we're gonna get his show consistently rolling and then for anybody else look and this is for anybody if you've been just thinking about starting your own show and you just you, you probably don't have a platform on your own uh, but you know you want to run your own show and you don't have the infrastructure man i'm really opening this up to everybody if you want to run your own solo show if you have a group of guys where y'all want to run an nfl show for the nfl season if you do baseball if you do baseball and you want to cover MLB with a group of guys for MLB. That's cool as well. Um, and I'm really not putting too many restrictions on it uh, for the people that come over. Because for the main thing with me is just getting the content out. And if your content hit, you get 100% of the ad revenue. You get 100% of the donations you're able to bring into your own cash app. I'm not, I'm not trying to take from none of it. I'm, not really, I'm just trying to build a network. I'm not trying to make no profit off this. Y'all get the ad revenue for your own show. You get the cash apps for your own show. The main thing is I just, all I ask is that if you guys bring a show over here that you consistent, whether it's one day a week, two days a week, um, and it's high quality, right? I don't want you coming over here, you know, low quality. You ain't got it set up. You can't speak the English the language correctly. Just make it decent quality because I'm going to be transferring a lot of these shows over to um, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and I'm going to be putting these shows on other platforms as well. So you got a little bit yeah, talking here. You can tap into politics, right? It really is really nothing off limits. As long as if, if you got a niche, whatever your niche is, I mean, if, if you want to do entertainment news, if you want to be the, the Dreamers Pro at FYF, I'm cool with that. Uh, if, if you if you want to be the, the Charlemagne the God of FYF, I'm cool with that. But just 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 join the Discord. I'm um if the if you haven't joined the Discord, the link for the Discord been popping through the chat um the entire night. So you can always just hit the Discord, join our Discord, um, reach out to me on there, and we can set it up. Talking here, make sure you're in the Discord. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, otherwise you have to reach out to me on IG, and sometimes I don't get my IG messages. I got so many messages on IG. Sometimes it, I be having to approve it, and I sometimes I don't see it for a week or so. So just get in that Discord. If, if you don't have the link, if you don't see the Discord link, let me drop it one more time. I gotta find it in here. Let's see if I got it on me. Do I have a Discord link right here? Can see a Gil could come through this Saturday because true, true the king say he got a gripe with Gil yeah, he, a, and he, he won't smoke with Gil about the Jokic comment. I'm gonna try, like I said, this Saturday. Anything that anything happening from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I can't make no promises because I'm gonna be super laser focused in on my tournament. I might not even tune into YouTube, man, because you know. So I can't. I can try, but I can't make no if it, if if. It, Anything that's going on this weekend, I can't make no promises. I can't even lie. And even for y'all show, I'm going to have to do everything early before I leave. So y'all set up and ready to go with your graphics and everything before I even take off. But Sturdy's going to have some access to the stream yard. So he's going to be able to do a lot of stuff. The same things that I would be able to do, he's going to be able to do. Um, jump the show off and do all that. Um, so I'm going to make sure. He says the link says expire here. Let me, let me, I'm going to drop it for you right now, talking here. Hold on, hold on. I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna get it right now. Let me log into my Discord and get you a link.
All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here it is right here. All right, here you go, talking head. Here go the Discord link, though. There you go, talking head. That's the Discord link. So, yeah, that's that's for anybody. I mean, like I said, so my main thing, y'all, is if you got a show idea or a show concept, let's get it going. Let's get it going here because I'm trying to basically have a 24-7 channel, man, where we got people uh, – Rocking their own show, Laker channel, Clipper channel, Suns channels, whatever it is, man. We really trying to, because because every every because the thing is everything that you do over here on FYF Sports, y'all gotta understand. Whenever I move to other platforms, everything that's going on over here moves with me. So as this channel starts to grow, and these opportunities with Roku T, Roku TV and, and things start to grow. Y'all moving right with me over to these other platforms. The con the content is gonna transfer. So and, and, and so it's just gonna is everybody gonna glow up with it. Um, so if you have an idea, if you have something you want to get going, let's make it happen. Cause shoot, if you if you we if you if you're really diligent with it, we we can make the show happen. You can get started tomorrow. I want I mean, to do football to be honest or not. I mean, if you want to, but the thing is, I just want people that's going to be consistent. Like, if you want to do a football show, let me know the name of the show. Let's go create your show graphics. Tell me what time you can be consistent with, whether it's once a week or not, and we can get you started with it, right? And, yeah, it, and, that's it, a fact. and it might look, it might it, it might start off with a ton of traction. Like, I, I would expect anything involving Sturdy and that group of guys, that's probably going to start off with a lot of traction because everybody know them, right? And they're going to be talking basketball talk. And so, you know, you know, so there's going to be some work you got to do. Like Fontaine's trying to build up his show over here. So he's trying to find more of a fan base that has an interest in sports betting. So some of his shows do well. Other ones don't do as well. But that's just part of when it starts off. The, the goal is trying to we, we try to give we trying to cater to all elements of the fan base here. Now, I don't expect everybody to tune in for a sports bet show. I don't expect everybody to tune in for NFL or MLB. But as we start to grow, you, your, your own individual fan base, your own social media is gonna start to grow, and you can bring them people here. Um, I'm even looking for gamers too. If you if you game and you want a gaming show, gaming channel, let's do it, man. We're trying to rock out. Uh, Tekken Eight rank gaming stream. Will Lakers like like Will Lakers? Ain't nothing off the table. As long as you ain't doing no OnlyFans type stuff, ain't nothing off the table, man. And then the brother that's trying to do the football, you may need to try to reach out to Mac Duff. That's a football guy that, that, that people, a lot of people know, and you partner up with him and, and build it from there and and, and get, get the ball rolling. Everybody love football, so you may need to get some football oh, yeah. guys. You, oh, yeah. you, may, you may go look up and get an anti-social. I don't know how to find them sometimes, but you may mess around and get him because he love to talk football too. Hey, I know anti, like I said, if it's just once a week, it makes it easier if it's just once a week to get people to pull up because they is it's that one it's always that one day a week where we know you always gonna be available. And even if you're not always available, at least one or two of you guys are available to make the show happen. So and when we we can we can get it rolling. But as this summer progresses and we reach out to more people, I expect this to grow. I need to get renegade, 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 man. You gotta come on with your own show, man. You too damn funny, man. You, you might as well come on with your, your show, man, with your conspiracy theories. You be typing all that stuff in the Discord. You be having all these thoughts going through your head, Renegade, man. It's, 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 we need that 30 okay. minute to an hour show, man. Let me and Renegade have our own show, man. That would be funny as hell, man. I ain't gonna lie. No, yeah, yeah. it needs to be Jay. It needs to be Jay. Trunk, trunks and Renegade is over with. No, I'm not gonna lie. Renegade and go Mike. That would actually be a fun nah, Renegade and Jay. You oh, know yeah, the dude. Oh, he, he always be saying, "Uh, LeBron and the Boule." Oh <laughs> man, Renegade and Jay would go crazy. Renegade, hit hit me up in the Discord, Renegade, because we, we got to get Renegade on here. Renegade, I don't know how he ain't on the channel yet, man. He is too entertaining, man. Renegade, now Renegade show would go crazy. 
just because he crazy. He he just crazy. He gonna say something, do something to go viral. So, go Mike that fell off. Go Mike, bro. You know I I tuned in to go Mike late night one time. He just had an episode of the locker room playing. I said, go Mike. This <laughs> <laughs> go Mike that fell. I, I hit. I hit locker room up. I said, "You didn't got go, Mike, man." I said, "Go, Mike, to just uh, go, go, Mike." You, you, you wake up to go, Mike, and he'd be playing a whole ticket TV episode one time. You never know what to expect when you go over there. He gonna steal all your content. You if, can't he, get if, he, if he, if he was a hard headed to me, because he was kind of headed to the right direction of one point. Yeah. He was, was hard headed though. Yeah. Because I was, my prediction was that Go Mike was gonna be the first out of all of us to go viral. I was like, bro, Go Mike is gonna go viral, but then I don't know, man. Go Mike, I don't know, man. Go Mike, let it, let it get. He let, he let the little, he, he was getting a little bit of, a little, little bit of f- fandom. He let it get to his head, man. Cussing people out, kicking. Him. He didn't block at least nine hundred people. I said, "Go, Mike! You got you got nine hundred subs. What you doing blocking so many people, man?" I said, Is it, "That's your fans." Will Lakers, man! Look at the brother of Mary Juma. Salute, man! Sister Noble uh, was Adam. Go to college basketball. See, the thing is, Sister Noble, I compare Caitlin Clark to Adam Morrison because in college they were revered the same way. Two players. Didn't win national championships. Both some of the greatest scores for the men and women. Both are going to go. Both are regarded as the, some of the best college basketball players of all time. But they're both going professional. And so is the WNBA going to uh, are they going to because of their hard headedness and stubbornness? Are they going to turn Caitlin Clark into Adam Morrison as a pro? Or are they going to let her come into the WNBA and be Caitlin Clark? Are they going to open doors? Are they going to build teams around her? Are they going to stop all the BS that they've been on and just get to developing these players and let these players be themselves? Because you go with that same old played up formula, it's raps, man. It is raps. She's going to get buried and hidden in the WNBA, and she's going to be just like Kelsey Plum. Kelsey Plum came out of college in the same situation as Caitlin Clark. Lights out scored, looking like damn near Kobe every night. When you get to the WNBA, it just kind of disappear. I mean, I didn't really hear about Kelsey Plum again until she married the NFL player. Because she not, I mean, as good as she was in college, she she might be the third best player on her own team right now. She might be the third or fourth best player. Yeah, I agree with that. I so, agree. So we know it just all that scoring, it don't always translate the way we think it can translate. Cause we've seen a version of her before come into WNBA and completely disappear. Plus plus we don't trust the WNBA because they tricked off some bad situation. Maya Moore should still be in this league right now. They tricked that off. Then I mean, pay her. There, there are certain players though where they so early in their league. Like, why did why does the WNBA have a salary cap? You, your league just started. You ain't got no business having no type of salary cap. Because because when somebody like Caitlin Clark or Maya Moore walks in, you need to be able to pay them enough so they ain't going nowhere. Maya Moore was able to walk away. She walked away from the WNBA because she's making enough money in other places where she didn't have to rely on WNBA money. You need to make you need to be able to pay the most important players enough money so they don't go nowhere. But see, the problem is Oswan Williams is Caitlin Clark about to sell out arenas if they allow her to do so, but they only going to be paying her what? Probably less than 100,000 a year. So the only people that win out of this deal is the owners. Players ain't going to get no residual kickback. The, the CBA for the women is already in place. The CBA for the women ain't changing. So they kind of screwed themselves by putting themselves in a situation where only the owners are going to win. Once, and, and the owners in the WBA are trash. Because they ain't really trying to spend money. So you can't expect them to get this money, this additional income, 
and look to reinvest it to make the league better. They're not about to do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get the cap. I get the cap in leagues like the NBA, right? Because you want to keep the competitive balance. But the, this is already established league. I just don't get in a league where you go bank, damn near going bankrupt in the negative every single year. What the hell you got a salary cap for? Yeah, I, I don't need no structure like that. And shoot, you need to open up that salary cap because look, th this is a reality. But in today's day and age, shh, I want to know who's going to be the first uh, Bruce Jenner to Caitlyn Jenner of the WNBA. Because it's going one of these days, one of these NBA players is going to make that transition and going to be start hooping into the WNBA. And they better be willing to open up the open up the pocketbooks to pay him because that that's going to be your next. That's going to be your next Jordan, whoever it is. Man, that that's going to be your next Jordan. So you really, you really think that's going to happen? It's going to happen one day. Yes. There's going to be a male NBA player that transitions, go straight into the WNBA. And he's gonna start barbecuing everybody. That's whoever it is, and they better be ready to remove that cap and open up them pocketbooks because that's your next Jordan. I'm not watching that crap, man. Don't matter if you watch it or not. You put you know, see the thing is, as much as as much as you say you're not watching it, if a man transitioned and went and played in the WNBA, you would watch just to see how many school points he's gonna score on all them women. Don't get me wrong. I mean, see like a little clip and see how many points he averaged, but I'm, I mean, like, man, there's a lot of people that will watch because it, it's just whether it's whether it's positive notoriety or negative, it's gonna bring eyes. Oh my gosh! Jack, Jack Gilford said WNBA will never let Caitlin Clark be herself. They are too loyal to current players. And Jack Gilford, that's why I said she's gonna be the next Adam Morrison. I said she's walking into a league where the league itself is fighting against her. The players don't want her to be Caitlin Clark. You got people like Diana Taurasi and Cheryl Swoops talking about she can't do that. I said, if y'all want her fame to translate and this notoriety to come over to the WNBA, y'all better make sure it translates. Y'all better make sure Caitlin Clark can be Caitlin Clark if you want this league to thrive to any degree. I just don't think they want to see this league thrive. They just they, they what they want is they want the people that are watching Caitlin Clark to come over and watch them. They don't care about the league thriving and getting better. They just want more eyes on them. They want to have the opportunity to experience what Caitlin Clark is experiencing, all this fandom. So there's a there's a lot of jealousy that she's going to experience from her own players. That's why when Gil came in here, Gil said you need to start cutting and waving any player that looks crazy in her direction. I'm getting up out of there because I'm building everything around Caitlin Clark without even touching a basketball. She's already doubled the ticket prices. They stay, they come on. And there's always that element. Like as much as the WNBA want to play, like this is not an element. You got to play the black versus white element. It might seem corny. It might some people might not think is that moral, but it's an element of marketing that you have to consider because Indiana's what majority white state. So exactly. you're gonna she she's and it's very similar to Iowa. So she's gonna have a natural, a natural fan base of white fans, and there's always gonna be that black versus white dynamic that you just need to play into, just like the bird versus magic thing. Can't go wrong. But so, are they going to be so woke of a league? Are they going to be so woke of a league where they say, oh, we can't do that? Nah, you better do it. Hold on. Khalil, here's the link. Yeah. Do you think, do you think the uh, same uh, thing? Hey, Lamont, hey, Lamont, when you think about this, though, when you think about this, I don't think the WNBA ever had a face of the league. Think about all the great players they had. I don't think they ever had a face of the WNBA. And you know why, her? Because the WNBA, the WNBA wants to be bigger than the players. They don't want no player to be bigger than the league. They like the meant like the NFL mentality. See, but but the NFL can do that because the players run around with helmets on. You don't know what they look like. <laughs> no, it's a fact. 
You, you, I you, mean, you that's can, the honest guy truth. Then it's talking about the players. Too. The NFL is always going to be bigger than the players because you you can literally be in a grocery store next to an NFL player and never know because they run around with helmets on. But when you're an NBA player, you can't do that. The face of the league, that's why they can have a face. The NFL will never have a face. Unless it's a quarterback, you constantly taking your helmet off. Cause I'm just thinking about all the greats that played in the WNBA. They never had a face like they didn't even take advantage the earlier years when the Houston Commons were dominated. Why they didn't take advantage of that? They just it it's just a poorly ran league. It, it, it's crazy to me. It's totally crazy. Yep. Yo, Lamar, can you hear me? Hey, what up? What up? What up, Clip? What up, Lou OG? What up, everybody? What up? No, nah, Lamar, you speaking facts? Um, I heard I heard you allude to this a little earlier. Uh, we had I had Iowa here at my job here for eight days now, so I got a mm. real good chance to see them, be around them a lot, be around the team, the the coaches, the staff. Um, you was right with what you said, bro. A lot of the like, I'll give you a couple of examples. Well, one that I had yesterday. So one of the girls, um, the center girl, I forgot her name, not the black one, but the white one. I think she hurt. Uh, her parents were basically saying, like, well, everyone's out here just to see Kayla. You guys don't care about our kids and, like, the rest of the kids on the team. So, like, you can already see that resentment. And just seeing them uh, the, when they go to breakfasts, lunches, and stuff like that, Kayla Clark is mostly by herself. She has her own camera crew, everything dedicated specifically to her. Mm. And a oh, lot of these girls, I think they filming a documentary on her. I know they got something coming out um, soon as far as the tournament and everything, but just to see that in real time and be around them as long as I have, like a lot of these girls do resent her. She does have some friends on the team. But the majority of these girls just simply don't like her. And I don't think it's because she a bad person. I just simply think of the way that the media portray her and all, all the attention she get. It seemed like I got half the state of Iowa at my hotel right now. And almost every last one of these people are here to see her. And that's it. Um, when we were doing the, the escort out to the arena, um, she got the biggest roars and cheers. She came out last. Everybody else came out first, you know what I'm saying? It was just a lot of stuff that you can see just just witnessing it. Um mm. that a lot of the, a lot of these kids don't really like care for her even on their own team. Um the attention to detail that we had to pay as a hotel, uh pay attention to the amount of police I had to hire and uh security that extra security that I had to hire. I had to put cops and stuff like that on her floor specifically. Um, it's just a lot of stuff like and it seemed like don't nobody else care not even uh, to her parents so when her parents checked into the hotel right the fans flooded her parents so I had to tell because they travel with the Iowa State Police Department um, so I had to tell them to put a detail on her parents because a lot of these people are flooding their parents and they don't want to be around that stuff like so just to protect them that's how that's how much how many fans this girl got and I think that will translate into the WNBA, especially if she's good. Like she, I mean, Indiana couldn't have been a better choice. I know they are a trash team right now, but just the thought of uh, you just said this, Lamont, it's a predominantly white state. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that she's going to that to that team, and if she if she produces on a high level, she's gonna blow the NBA, the WNBA fan base out the water. Like it was just it was just mind boggling to see the fanfare that this this girl garners everywhere she goes. Like if she stepped down into the lobby, we had to have everything converge over to her. Like any move this girl made, every all the attention was on her. It was weird. And like I said, she got her own production uh company that follows her around everywhere she goes, everything she does, they follow her around and everything. It's just a weird dynamic to see. And just seeing, like I said, one when they had their team meetings and stuff like that, and I was in on um, the strategy in the strategy room um, when they were coming up for with a game plan to to uh, feature her. They were trying to like get her in space. I don't think they accounted for that Johnson girl playing the defense that she played on her because if you notice in the first half, uh, particularly the first quarter. The game plan worked to a charm. She scored like 18 points in the first quarter. And then once they put that Johnson girl on her, 
it seemed mm-hmm. like they couldn't they couldn't create a way to get her off the girl. They tried screens and all that. That girl went over the screens like she did everything she was supposed to do. I thought that girl was the best player on the floor um, mm-hmm. as far as impact, that Johnson girl. Even though her points and stuff, her if you look at her stat line, it won't reflect it. But just me knowing their game plan and watching how Don Staley and her staff blew that game plan up was crazy. And that's what I – my my biggest thing from that was when I look at – see, I blame that on Iowa scheduling poorly. You gave Iowa a cupcake schedule. Mm-hmm. You never put – gave – like imagine if they would have said, we might take the loss, but let's schedule an early season matchup against South Carolina, the LSUs, the, the, the top – like the top, top teams. Like let's not schedule Clark in Lewis University to start the year. Let's let's not schedule these cupcakes where we know she can pad her numbers, drop 30, 40, hit nine threes, get the scoring record. But when it matters most, you ain't you ain't, you don't have no you know you're not go, you don't know what it feel like to go up against the best defense in the country because that's what South Carolina was. That's the number one defense versus the number one offense. But see, the number one defense was battle tested, playing ranked teams. The number one offense only became the number one offense because you played against a lot of cupcakes the entire year and you didn't really beat anyone of notoriety. So I think it just came back to bite them, man. And that, that's what happened to me last year. Um, just me coaching. One of our best regular seasons, we played cupcakes all year. And we played so many cupcakes last year, my players were complaining about it. And when it, when it came time for that tournament – we ran in the NC State in the tournament. Them boys walked us down, man. Got us up out of there. So, and you're right about that, man. It's who you play that builds you up. And I mean, like you said, they really didn't go through a lot of adversity. I mean, the closest that they did get was in this, in this tournament. Um, I saw your community post where you talked about the late foul. Uh, they were allowing them girls to play physical the whole game up until that point. Um, and a lot of the fans kind of knew it when they came back to the hotel um, that that call shouldn't have been made. But, of course, they're not going to um, say that, you know, because they team advanced and everything like that. All in all, it was still a, a good uh, season for her overall. She did make a huge impact on that sport um, overall. Like, I, I, I truly – think that once she goes to the next level, she will have some level of struggles at first because the way that girl played defense on her, that's the way a lot of them girls in the WA are going to play defense. You got to understand this is college. The majority of these girls not even going pro. You know, yep. they just get there for the experience. But when you in that in that professional rank, all of them people can play. Even the sorriest ones to uh, us – can really play for real and, and she can't really move her feet laterally. I heard um what's the name talk about it earlier, uh Nahari, where he talked about her not having a real mid-range. Like you can see a lot of the flaws. Like just in this tournament was the first time that I actually sat down and really looked at her game. Of course, I heard of her, me being a basketball fan, everybody know who she is, but just having an opportunity to see it up close. Um, she has a lot of flaws, man. And, and like you said earlier, Lamont, it's easy to game plan on her. Um, all you got to be is, is you move laterally and have a little physicality to you. You can bump her off her spots. They beat her to a lot of her spots, and they forced her into a three-point shooter because of the lack of mid-range game. Um, so, and that tall girl, um, the Brazilian girl, kept her out the lane for the majority of the game. So, she still has some work to do, but I think she's really dedicated to her craft, and I think she'll be uh, willing to to add more to her bag in due time. But if she's good, you know, she's going to get all the endorsements. Everything's going to come her way, and she has that built-in white fan base that's going to automatically back her. You know what I'm saying? Whether uh, win, lose, or draw. So good. Hey, this hey. is a good stream, though. Extra screaming. No, Angel Reese need to worry about not being the next Kwame Brown. She that's her comparison. Yeah, I, I, mean, compare, like, I compare it to Andrew Reese more to Ben Simmons, though, with a month. Nah, because nah, Ben, she Sim- see, ben Simmons is highly right skilled. See, Ben Simmons is skilled. See, the thing is, with Angel Reese, she a raw talent. She she really just be scoring off a lot of grit and grind. She really a Lamont. raw talent. 
Lamont, what well, what about Juju? Do you think she could be the first? Uh, no, 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 Juju, no, no, Juju about to be the next Kobe, man. That's the yeah, next Juju Kobe. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Juju that's 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 that, and that's the thing. Like, people that really hoop, as soon as, as, soon as you watch Juju play, it just the way she moves, her stride yeah. with the basketball, her, her yeah. the, the pace of her play, it's, it's – that like it's it's it looks different from Caitlin. The way the yeah. way like, I don't know how to explain it, but like at the WNBA level, Juju is gonna be unstoppable. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't you, I didn't, uh, I didn't you, realize Juju's gonna be compared to Caitlin in the WNBA. I think Juju will have a better career. I didn't realize Juju was as big as she was. I saw them all played live. And I saw, you know, Caitlin, of course, in the last two games play. Yeah, she's I solid to me. Juju is 6'3". She's damn near my height. And she don't even really look like it on TV. But when she when she on the floor, like Lamar said, like, you can see the crossover appeal in, in, the, in the WNBA. You, her skill set. That's just like when, uh, when, when Kyrie got here. Everybody wanted Derrick Williams. And I was telling him, like, no, just the way Kyrie played, his skills would translate to the NBA a lot better. People looked at Derrick Williams' run in the, in, the, uh, in the tournament and wanted him. And I'm like, no, we should go after Kyrie. And I it was it, I, I was I was right eventually because Derrick Williams didn't have much of an NBA career. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of the same with, with Caitlin and Juju. You can look at Juju and her skills will translate to that level. And think about it, bro. She only, what, 18, 19 years old. She's going to be far better at her if she play all four years than Caitlin was in her. We, four we can be honest. The only reason why Juju lost for the, the team around her is complete garbage. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to shit on them girls, but whoever they had I, when I was watching that game, I said these players they got out with her, out here with her is garbage. I was like they stopped recruiting as soon as they got Juju. It's like they said, all right, we done recruiting. They ain't get nobody else. They didn't get no transfers. Not. Well, I said, boy, if they do any type of recruiting and bring in some talent, it, it can get ugly for the NCAA. It's going to get ugly. Clark versus yeah, Juju right. in, in the WNBA Finals going to bring in ratings. Well, well, the maybe, WNBA Finals is only going to bring in ratings if Caden Clark is there. Yeah, this, that's what I was about to say, whoever just said that, bro. If So that can be her counterpart. If Juju, once Juju get to the next level, and if she's on the opposite side of the of the, of the uh, bracket with Caitlyn, then that can be your Magic and Larry. Dynamic. I like Paige too as well. I I like her too. I'm just talking about well, Paige is good, but I don't know about her, man. Just seeing her in person, I don't really know about her. I don't. I, I'm not sold on Paige either. Me but is the WNBA is the WNBA gonna push it though? That's the thing. I don't give a damn but, but, how good they are. Man. I think but, they can push Paige. I think she'd be a good market employee. But as far as like a talent, I'm not a believer in Paige. I think Paige at the college level, she's good, but she didn't sell me. I think yeah. I'm a Malaysia Fu Wiley, she's gonna be a hooper. I like her. Um, another hooper I see is um, you know the craziest thing is is and nobody's even talked about her was. I think one of the best players in this tournament, and nobody said a word because because of Caitlin Clark is one of Caitlin Clark's teammates. But ha that, Hannah, that girl with the Afro pub, Hannah Stokey, but she yeah, is that dog. That girl, that girl was smoking. And I just, it's funny you brought her up, Lamont. I swear to God, I just ran into her in the lobby, and I told her you did your thing. And I think she only a rookie, ain't she? I think she a fr yeah, she a freshman. Yeah, so I mean, that, yeah, that girl can ball, man. She can ball. If it wasn't for her, the game wouldn't have been as close as what it was. Even in the last game, she had like what twenty-two points. She saved Caitlin them Clark. versus UConn. They don't beat UConn yep. without her. She was because yep. remember, Caitlin Clark zero seven from the three versus UConn. It was Hannah Stokey that was barbecuing. I'm talking about making tough layups. I mean, but nobody say nothing about her. So we'll, Lamont, we'll see her next year. Lamont, I got I, I got one more question. Yeah. What do you think about that girl at Iowa State? That that girl that looked three hundred pounds on TV, like the center. I, I I know she's big, but she got skills, man. Who are you talking about? Um, Brooks. I think her name Crooks or Brooks. Like, oh, you like talking about you talking about the light skinned girl who yeah. dropped forty? Yeah. I didn't watch her play. I just heard she dropped forty, but but I didn't get a chance to watch him play. So, but I mean, she. I mean, you drop forty, you got it. Something you got to be somewhat decent. So we'll see if it translates. Um, but it's hard to say. Women's basketball is just so hard to say. 
unless you really watch and you spend a lot of time watching, it's a little different from the men. The men, the men got some hidden, like it's some, it's some hidden, it's some hidden players on the men's side, like the dude Castle from UConn. He looked like a problem at the next level. Look, like he' about to be a problem. He' the best player on their team. Yeah, this was a lit tournament, though, overall. I mean, this is my first time really focusing on women's college basketball. It was lit, bro. Just going to the games and the environment, seeing all the different fans from all over the country and the passion that they had. You know, when, when Iowa came back to the hotel, they were dejected, but we had so many fans here. As soon as they hit the door, the fans just erupted, and, and that brought their spirits up a little bit, you know what I'm saying, um, which was mm-hmm. important for them. Because, I mean, like Caitlin, you got a lot of the girls, this was their last game, and they wanted to go out with a bang. But just the amount of support that the fans gave them, that was good to see. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. all in all, it was a good experience, man. I got a lot of pictures and stuff like that. So, it was a it was a fun time, man. Fun time. Yeah, it's going to be good. I forgot, too, to ask you about that because you, you is in Cleveland, too. That's yeah. crazy, man. So, that's crazy you had the whole Iowa team there, man. Yeah, but, man, it was it was wild, man. Our whole lobby, everything is decked out with all Iowa. They they uh, made the staff wear Iowa gear and all this stuff, you know, to support them and all that. They gave tickets away to the games and stuff. So it was a good time, bro. bro you, you, good time. You, you you would you 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 had to finesse the uh, you would have had to finesse the uh, Caitlin Clark autograph on some memorabilia somehow. Like, well, I got you all the security, man. Come on, can you, can you bless me with this? I got, you know what? I got real cool with her dad. Um, I spent a lot of time around him, mm-hmm. um, so he was he was real cool. Um, and a lot of her security personnel, I got real cool with. But as far as Caitlyn herself, honestly, man, she wore that hoodie and she just had tunnel vision. She didn't interact with none of the fans. Um, she didn't wave at nobody. She just was straight to her room every time. Straight to her room. She really didn't do a whole lot. Um, and the little that she did do. Like I told y'all, cameras was around her the whole time because I believe they filming a documentary on her, just following her around throughout this whole tournament and throughout the whole season, her last season with the team. So it'll be a dope watch, man, when they do come out with it um, eventually. So it'll be mm-hmm. a dope watch. Oh, yeah, Khalil, why you on here, man? Man, why boxing let on Earl Spence finesse his way into, into uh, probably most likely getting that fight with Tim, man, instead of letting uh, – Instead of that, a Crawford get that match, man. Why, why, well, I told y'all man? that I told y'all he wasn't gonna fight Crawford again, man. He lost too convincingly. When you a boxer, especially an undefeated one, when you take a loss like that, that shake your confidence. And he understand it don't matter where they at, one forty seven, one fifty four. He would always lose to Crawford based off the way he lost. So what Errol Spence is trying to do is he trying to become a champion up there, get a couple more fights, and he gonna cash it out. He ain't going to be boxing too much longer. So, I mean, that's his – he don't want to go out with a loss. He want to kind of, you know, distance himself from that embarrassing loss. But he had never fight uh, Terrence Crawford again. That's over with. Yeah, I didn't like it. I, I, didn't I wouldn't like either, it, bro. I mean, you. I would say – if you smart and, and you're trying to make money and longevity, you got to stay away from Crawford, man. Yeah, Crawford's too I, dangerous. I mean, boxing is a corrupt sport. So, the way the, 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 the rankings is, this is why a lot of people don't – really understand it because there's so many belts there's so many sanctioning bodies and stuff a lot of people don't keep up if you ain't a, a avid boxing fan you're not gonna understand who the real champions are you see four different guys in the same weight class all got belts but it's only one true champion so hey. unless you follow the sport you're not gonna really know who the real champion well is. prediction jake paul mike tyson who you got <laughs> i don't really give a fuck about that fight to be honest i think if it was a real fight, Jake Paul would be out of there in less than 10 seconds. But they're not going to allow Mike Tyson to kill that kid. What's going to end up happening is they're going to allow Mike Tyson to rough him up a little bit. Jake Paul going to probably drop Mike Tyson like later on in the fight to, to make the shit look more appealing. And it's all an exhibition, man. It's not going to be a real fight. If it was a real fight, Mike Tyson, even at an advantage stage of 57, he would knock Jake Paul the fuck out. I, I think I think Mike Tyson about to go in there and try to kill that dude. I don't think they're gonna allow it to. I don't think uh, it's gonna be similar to the Roy Jones fight. Roy Jones could have gotten knocked out if Mike Tyson was really really pressing the issue. But I think it's more of you know theatrics and stuff like that. They'll make it look entertaining, make it seem like Jake Paul got an actual real shot because most people 
who just even like casuals understand that you look at the way Mike Tyson practiced still, he always in the gym and stuff like that. So he would, he would literally knock Jake Paul out, but they won't, they won't allow that to happen because they making a lot of money off Jake Paul. So having him win against all these older fighters and stuff like that is keeping the cash flow going. Hold on. We got Timothy Taylor, Timothy Taylor, the Indiana fever got the South Carolina center from last year, best player in the country. They don't need another center. They just no. got the best center in the goddamn country. Yeah, they, they got Boston, man. Yeah, they Leah Boston was the best center in the country. They got her. She's solid. I mean, she she was rookie of the year, I think. She good. They just don't got nobody else outside of that. Hey, uh, quick uh, before I get up out of here, uh, Herm, when is y'all show again, bro? I I tune in to watch y'all show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The crossover is gonna begin next Saturday with this Saturday coming up on uh, five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the, the show will be called The Crossover. We're going to bring it over here, man. going to have some interesting characters. We got Sturdy. Uh, we got uh, Mariah. Uh, we got The Casual. We got Rebranding. We got myself. We got H from the UK as well. So we just coming together, do a show. We're going to talk with Real Ball. You know, we gonna, it's going to be interesting. They still going to let Hiram be Hiram. So that's a good thing about it. But uh, we just going to talk ball, man. We're going to talk different sports as well. Uh, when it comes to boxing, when they want to touch on boxing, man, if you want to, man, I would love to have you on the show. Cause you, oh, yeah, so y'all, is it a set panel or y'all going to have people come up and, you know, yeah, we'll have, we'll have some people. And, okay, yeah, we'll have some people come up. But mo but it's going to be mostly our perspectives for the most part, but then we'll allow people to come up and uh, chop it up with us as well. Oh, that's what's up. I mean, Lamont giving y'all his blessing. I'm always supporting Lamont, so uh, i definitely check y'all out, bro. I got a run, though, man. Um, Make sure they because they got a curfew, so I got to make sure they they good. So, uh, good stream again, Lamont. Um, I'll holler at y'all next time. All right, Best salute. All right, All right Herm. I'm gonna go ahead and drop you down, Herm. I'm about to get this one over with, man. All right, bet, appreciate bro. you pulling up. Appreciate it, bro. Salute to Herm for hitting the cash app as well, y'all. Um, but look, y'all, man, it's FYF Sportsman, another great podcast episode, man. Y'all seen it, y'all heard it here first, man. Right? It, 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 Caitlin Clark is headed to the WNBA. Her biggest demon right now is the WNBA itself. And will the WNBA fumble fumble the ball on this? Um, they have an opportunity of a lifetime. Um, and I just don't know if they smart enough to understand what they're getting and to capitalize on it. Um, and I don't think the players – um, are selfless enough to move out the way and let these young players come just take over. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of jealousy and, and vitriol that I'm sensing from the current players. Um, envy over the fact that these college girls can get more notoriety than the, than the WNBA can. Um, and, you know, it's something to watch. I want to see how she's accepted. Is it going to be a lot of fake love? Right. Um, you know, will this team, the Indiana Fever, will they build everything they have around her? Give the fans what they want because that's what the fans want. Um, and this is something we just have to see. Uh, time Only time will tell with, with this one right here. Um, and, you know, I just anything in, in the hands of the WNBA, I just don't trust it. Um, and so ultimately, I feel my prediction for Caitlin Clark is that not by by force, not by choice, she will become the next Adam Morrison because the WNBA does not understand how to market players, nor do they understand how to let players themselves thrive and be bigger than the league, if that's what it calls for. Um, and I think the WNBA wants to be the face. They want to be the they want to be what's talked about. Like I said, they have the most broken and most flawed marketing strategy that I don't understand. Um, they try to sell the league and they don't sell teams or players. Um, they're already starting off bad because they haven't even put this young core players on the U.S. Olympic team, which they should be. Um, and just like what Gilbert Arenas, when he came up here, said, he talked about the importance of getting these ladies on the U.S. Olympic team early because that's just jersey sales. Right, that's access to, to to some of the fandom that's attached to these players. 
Um, he says the Indiana fever need media attention. Well, it's not the, the thing is the, the people coming over, the people coming over don't care about all of that. The people coming over only care about Caitlin Clark. That's the thing. And so it's going to be on the team. It's going to be on the team to build around Caitlin Clark. When she gets there, you get it 30 shots a game, right? Put you on every billboard, right? They, the team is going to have to sell Caitlin Clark, right? The team is going to have to sell the rivalry between Angel Reese. The, the WNBA is not doing that. The WNBA is going to shy away from anything that seems bigger than the league itself. Yeah, Gilbert was up here. Gilbert was up here. Just scroll back. Gilbert was up here for about an hour cooking with us. Um, he cooked on a lot of stuff from the WNBA, a lot of interesting talking points. He even he, he even had a segment where he talked about the big three. He compared the big three to the WNBA, and he talked about why the the, the big three is kind of failing in and of itself and, and why they, they're not as successful as they pretend to be. Um, he, he dropped a lot of facts. You know, he talked about that deal that they have with CBS. You know, he talked about how the big three is actually paying CBS to be on CBS. CBS ain't paying the big three. Um, interesting nugget right there. Just kind of tells you where they're at. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not like I said, it's not as easy as to get on these big networks as it might as it might seem or sound. So. Uh, but look, guys, man, um, FYL Sports, another great podcast episode. I'm, I'm going to try my best to get lives between now and, and Wednesday. Definitely going to be going live Tuesday for sure. I'm going to try to get another live late night tomorrow. Um, and so we'll be good. He says these coaches are getting millions. Don Staley make $4 million a year. Uh, the girls are going to the WNB making $70,000. Um, but, but, but goodness, this is why a lot of these ladies are um, are staying in college. People like Angel Reese, they're staying in college all four years because they can make more. Even the players and NIL money is making more. Falaji Johnson and them, she's making over a million a year. You know, um, uh, Malaysia Fu Wiley just signed a deal with Red Bull. She's probably going to be making more than WNBA players. Uh, we know Juju is making more than WNBA players. So. If you a decent, if you a decent women's player at the NCAA level, you are in no rush to go to the WNBA because the women there, the, the players there are not going to accept you. You don't know if the team is going to accept you. You don't know if they're going to market you the same. You don't know if your if your uh any of your any of your brand partners that you're attached to are going to follow you to the WNBA. So why not just maximize and just stay in college four years, maximize that income, and then go to the WNBA? Um, but so it is what it is. It's just yeah, Caitlin stayed all four years. She did, but but Caitlin was Caitlin was Caitlin had to play through that odd transition. Remember, she didn't play all four years with NIL. She played during that odd transition with the COVID year too. And so with that odd transition through the COVID year. She played through that odd time stream. And that's when the, the college landscape changed after COVID with the transfer portal changing, the NIL money being out at it. And she chose and she could have she Caitlin actually could stay and play another year. She she has another year of college basketball that she can use because of the COVID year. She's just choosing not to use it. She could go be a grad student and play one more year. It's like if she wanted to. She can go be a grad student and go to South Carolina. Because y'all saw the little funny clip where with uh, Cam Brink and the South Carolina coach, and and she was joking. She was he was she was joking in front of the camera. She was like, "Hey y'all, Cameron Brink is is not going to the WNBA. She's actually coming back for one more year of college because Cameron Brink. She's one of those players that could use use that one extra year eligibility. Um, so it is what it is." Um, and I think that's where Cheryl Swoops actually misquoted because Cheryl Swoops was speaking as if Caitlin had used that fifth year eligibility. And that's why she broke the scoring record because she was in college an extra year when that's not true. Caitlin never used that extra year eligibility that she has access to. Rapper guy said K K Kwame compared LeBron to LeVar. Well, the, Kwame did that because Kwame's just trying to say relevant. See, Kwame is just hanging around and taking too much advice from Carcino. That's all he's doing. 
He thinks that the formula for more views is to talk negative about LeBron James. And it ain't. You know, it's not. It's not a good formula. So it, it's in a sense, it just kind of makes him look like a hypocrite on everything that he's saying. He talks about the media being hypercritical of players, unfairly judging them, assessing things that's non-basketball related. And all he's doing is doing the same thing that he claims the media did to him. He's just doing the same thing to LeBron James. He, he, he's running with fake stories. He's running with fake narratives, right? Because you, you never hear him talk about anything that LeBron does that's positive, right? He says he's all for the kids and doing stuff in the community. He hasn't done one live stream about LeBron James's school. He hasn't done that. That's positive. That's for the kids. That's But he, like I said, he picks and chooses. He, he, he kind of picks and chooses where to pretend. Um, and then so he just thought the, the most trendy thing to do would be to talk about Bronny James and why Bronny James. See, Bronny James is doing what Bronny James is doing, what hundreds and hundreds of college basketball players are doing. They they entered a draft without an agent just to talk to NBA scouts, see what they need to go back to college and improve, go back to college for a year, work on those things and then come back at it. Carson Edwards did it when he was at Purdue. Right, a lot, a ton of players enter the draft without an agent just to be able to get in front of NBA scouts so that they can know what they need to improve in their game. So the fact that he's the fact all, when Ronnie said he was entering the draft without an agent, it should have told you everything that you need to know. He ain't going to the draft to stay, and he's only going to go in the draft to stay if he gets raving reviews or some type of guarantee from a team that they're going to draft him. Anything outside of that, he's coming back to college, which is why he did it without an agent. Salute to Clarence, man. Be good. Be good to life. Jenkins, man. He's at the Clarks. Appreciate you pulling up, man. I know it's towards the end of the stream, but I appreciate you pulling up, man. You might want to rewind back, man. Gil, Gil Berenice came in with some interesting insights um, on the Caitlin Clark situation. What's your Instagram? Uh, it's just at FYL Sports debates at fyf sports debates it should be easy to find once you start typing in fyf sports debates you it should pop up there's a fake fyf sports debates page but you could easily tell the difference my page i think my i think my page has a check mark um and my page i think we have like fifteen thousand followers on ig i think the fake one is like not no check mark so mine has a check mark should be easy, pretty easy to find or or you could just join the discord uh kid trunks if you if you're trying to um, if you're trying to reach out about anything in particular, or I'll drop the Discord link if you if you want to reach out. He says he didn't even talk about the museum. What museum? What are you talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, but but look, y'all. I mean, look, look, Kwame is. Uh, I'm trying to think now. So everything Kwame Brown does now revolves around what he thinks the people on his YouTube channel might want to hear. And that's that's why it's so all over the place. And, and, and that's why he has a lot of, to me, he has a lot of contradictory statements. You know, you cry about the media attacking you. It's players like people like Stephen A. Smith. You make up you make up stories about how Stephen A. Smith costs players money, but he doesn't talk about how he he lost millions and millions of dollars because of bad investments or getting into business with with bad investment companies. He doesn't talk about the fact how he gave up millions and millions of dollars because he turned down a massive contract offer from the Washington Wizards because he wanted to test the free agency waters, and then he and then he got injured and in. in killed his own value because he got injured that last year. So he doesn't talk about the mistakes that he made that cost him money. He just tries to pretend that Stephen A took money out of his pocket. And that's the narrative that he pushes. He says, Paige already decided to stay another year. Paige decided to stay another year, one, because she's making more money. There's really, and when you look at, when you look at the draft, she's probably going to get drafted to a team that's not going to play her a ton. Because right now, if you put Paige in the draft, She's definitely outside of the top five, right? There's just five to six players that are most definitely going to get drafted ahead of her. The girl from Tennessee, 
the girl from UConn, obviously Caitlin. You got Angel might go ahead of her depending on what teams need. So, uh, again, and you got Cameron Brink who's definitely going to go ahead of her. So the way the landscape is looking, she's going to go to a team that's that's going to be a, a bit more adept and, and, and not really willing to throw her in the starting lineup and push her. I know, goodness. And see, that's another thing. See, that's a side that we don't get to see. And I'm that's why I'm glad Khalil came up here and talked about that because, man, a lot of people don't see that side. You know, they don't see that side. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about Camilla Car uh, Cardosa. Yeah, she definitely going in the top five. This just wouldn't be a good year for Paige to come out anyway. You know, j j just a bad year for her to come out. I mean, at Paige's skill level with UConn, you, you, she has to come back one because I think UConn, after this most recent signing, they got to have the number one recruiting class in the country because they just got the number one player in the country. Before that, I think they had like the number 14 player in the country. So they're going to, they, they, they already started off strong and we, we don't even know what they're going to do with regards to the transfer portal. Plus the players that were injured this year are going to be coming back. I mean, you talk, you, you're talking number one in the country. If, if there was an early ranking for women's basketball next year, UConn has to be one or two, just based on the players that they got coming in, Paige coming back, players getting healthy. It's got to be South Carolina and UConn one and two to start the year because because Iowa's losing Caitlin Clark. So there's no way you can even put them in the top 10, right? They'll be they'll look different. Cooper Cooper could be a bust if he if he didn't pan out. And you know it's still real early for him. We haven't even seen him play a college game, uh, so we just got to wait and see what Cooper looks like. Really hard to judge him against high schoolers. Paige will be healthy next year. Paige was healthy this year and was good. She just didn't have a team. They have no depth when they then when they play Iowa in that first half. That was the real UConn, but they got tired. They had no subs. So, I mean, but any player can be a bust, Rap Guy Reloaded. That's the thing. Anybody can be a bust. There's so many factors that go into being a bust. And so, and, and that's why I say people have turned being in being a bust, that, that term bust has become this negative connotation. And like, like that stems from like people from Kwame Brown making it seem like being labeled a bust is this absolutely bad thing. No, it's just sports terminology. You got to get out of your feelings when people use it. When, when we say that you're a bust, it just means something went wrong and you never panned out to be the player that we thought you could be. That could be an injury that you can't control. It could be you yourself just not putting in the work. So injuries like Greg Oden, you being lazy, like Anthony Bennett and Kwame Brown. All right. So, so sometimes you or or you could just be scouts can just sometimes scouts just get it wrong. And that happens too, like they did with a with a um with Andrew Bogut. I think they just got it wrong with Andrew Bogut. You know, I think they just over projected. You said I just watched that last stream with Elder and his feelings. We didn't. We had Elder on here. Oh, oh what, what stream you talking? You talking about that old stream? I think I had a. I think I dropped the older video where we where we replayed some old streams. So Sister Noble says, uh, "View is not." True that Caitlin Clark's teammates didn't like her. I don't know, Sister Noble. We just we just had the man here, Khalil, who ran the entire hotel for the Iowa Hawkeyes women's basketball team in Cleveland. He was just he was around them ever since they arrived in Cleveland. He saw up close and personal how they interact with each other when they're not in front of the cameras on the court. When they're when they're not in that huddle, when they're not high fiving. No, Sniper Nation, I agree, because Brandon Roy even said it. Brandon Roy said if Greg Oden was healthy, they were easily NBA champions. That's how good he thought Brent Greg Oden was. He says if Greg Oden was healthy, we NBA champions. Yes, yeah, Sister Nova, you meant it. Khalil, Khalil, Khalil run, ran, runs the hotel. He ran the security for the hotel that the women's, Iowa Hawkeye women's were in in Cleveland. 
And I know he ain't lying because I was in Cleveland a couple of years ago, linked up with him. And that's what he does. He does security for hotels and big time events like this. And so he saw behind the scenes, he even introduced some new stuff. He talked about how he said they were filming a documentary on her. She's secluded from the team, hoodie on, not talking to no one in her room, separated from the team when they were eating. He dropped some gems. He said, I met Odin when I was 12. He played bowling with a bunch of kids at Big Owls in Seattle. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah, I played against Odin in high school. Yeah, that's one of our rivals. He says, I can see it on the court too. Clark gets mad easily. You know, that always worries me too, man. You know, I, I have some red flags in players, man. Um, players that complain to the refs too much is a red flag for me. But, I mean, even the best, I know the best of the best players always do it. But when you're doing it that much at the college level, mm, it's, it's tough, man. It's, 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 that's a tough pill to swallow. I mean, we, we just had a game last week in a tournament. We played a tournament at ASU. Boy, one of my players is talking to the refs and messed around and got a tech, man. I don't even I don't even go off like I'm like, I, I almost I almost lost my mind on the player. We know I, I tell them we don't talk to refs. Refs don't win or lose games, man. We 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 trying to make the refs our best friends. Even when the ref make a bad call, you know what I'm saying? Good call, ref. That was a great call, ref. Every time, man. The refs. The only thing the refs can do is hurt you. You tr you need to be trying to make the refs your best friend. Don't talk to them at all. Good call, ref. Dang, my bad, ref. I did travel. Got to let it ride, man. All that yelling at the refs, showing them up, nah, that don't work. All that do is it just puts something mentally in the back of their mind. Go ahead and make that bad call. No, the, no, 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 Sister Noble. The, the doctor, the documentary is for Caitlin Clark alone. It's not for the Iowa women's basketball team. She, she had her own camera crew following her around filming her own documentary. So, so that's another reason why she might have been secluded is because she had her own individual thing going on in the filming of her own documentary. She had her she had her own security detail and she had her own camera crew. And she also had the camera crew from the hotel because Khalil came on here and said he had to assign a, a, a security detail to her parents because the media was flooding her parents as well. Yeah, just go back and listen. Go back and listen to the stream. Khalil came through, gave us some information we didn't know. Gil, Gil came through, gave us some information, man. And. Really, we, I'm just trying to put this information out there in hopes that somebody from the WNBA sees this. Now, and, and the thing is, I've tried a multitude of times to get WNBA players on here. I've tried to get people in the front offices of the WNBA on here. They all will. They all have declined. No one from the WNBA will talk WNBA. They only like talking WNBA nonsense on controlled platforms. So what they'll do is they'll only talk WNBA basketball if let's say they're on a all women's platform with all women speaking on the WNBA or what they'll do is they'll have a all a WNBA platform and then what they'll do is they'll put one man with like four women with a woman moderator where the man is literally having to fight tooth and nail just to get a say so in versus all these women it it, it, it makes no sense but they won't ever come independently over here and really address these harsh questions. So that's why they can go to these other platforms and say goofy stuff like men don't support the WNBA and not really get checked because they say it in a safe, safe space. And they don't want to, they don't want to answer the tough questions about too much of the LGBTQ um, in the, in their league. Uh, they don't want to, they don't want to talk about that. Um, 
they don't want to, I mean, there's just so much stuff they don't want to address. Um, they don't want to address the, the, the older players in the league being resistant to the new players. Um, and that clash is stopping these young generation from coming into the league, taking it over. They, they do. But, but you know what, Sniper? You know what I even said, though? They do be getting on Lexi, but they could go in way more, though. They, they, I, I can kind of sense, like, when I watch this show, I can kind of sense them easing the foot off the gas. They start going in and then take off on the gas. Because if they really wanted to go all the way in, they could go all the way in. Now, nah, rap God, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to say that. They wouldn't have brought her on if she didn't add anything. So it's just that she's just she's always going to be protective of her league and her spot in the league. Right. And these new players, these new players. One day, one of these new players is going to get drafted to her team and that new player is going to be taking her spot. They don't want that. They don't want that player coming in and taking their spot. FYF, have you seen the mind game? Nope, I haven't seen it. This is you telling me all the close listen between Kate Martin and Caitlin Clark and Hannah Stokey isn't real, according to a man who worked hotel security. No, he didn't work. He doesn't work hotel security. He uh, he he runs all the security for entertainers. So so the th and so the thing is when he when he's in that position, he doesn't. He's not a security guard. He runs the security staff. He's the one. If you need a security detail, he's the one that makes sure the security detail gets assigned to you. He's the one that saw Caitlin Clark's parents were getting flooded by around media. So he assigned a security detail around their room. So he's there. So he what when you when you are when you are someone that has this assigned security, that means you have to be mindful of everything going around. You have to watch what is this person doing? What is this person's routine? Who is this person interacting with? You have to be extremely, extremely uh, 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 aware of your surroundings. And so you just kind of naturally start to pick up on certain things. And from his vantage point, that's what he saw. Now, you 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 can choose to take it for what it's worth. He wasn't saying it in a way to demean Caitlin Clark. He was just telling you what he saw. Uh, v VVS is FYF. What would be your plans to promote the WNBA if you was in charge? It's a lot of eyes on women's ball. Number one thing I would do, tell the, tell the older players to shut the hell up. One, I, I definitely, I'm sending a memorandum out to all teams. Shut the hell up talking about the new players coming in. If you ain't got nothing positive to say, if you ain't talking about how these, how elite these players are and what they're going to do to add to the game, shut the hell up talking about it. Because the fact that somebody like Dan Tarasi, it's going to put out a post today talking about, oh, Caitlin can't, she can't come in our league and do that. Well, you need somebody to come in your league and do something. Because whatever y'all been doing, don't nobody care. So all that stuff that uh, Dana Taurasi got going on and Brittany Griner and them got going on. I told you, Brittany, Brittany Griner got, got her dumb ass locked up in Russia for months. She come back home to a seven person welcome home party. They don't care. She came back home to Phoenix to a seven person welcome home party. We don't sport, sports fans is sports fans are are, 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 are are gruesome, man. They will let you know who you are in a heartbeat. She came home to a seven person welcome home party, man. Did nobody care? She can dunk. She can do all this stuff on the basketball. She can do a. She can do. She, Brit, Brittany Griner can do a lot of stuff on the basketball court that a sophomore men's player can do in high school. Nobody care because she has no appeal to male fans. Her, her she tries to sell us her game by running around talking about she can beat Demarcus Cousins, and we know you can't do that. So you keep trying to. You keep trying to. They, they keep trying to sell us this fib that they're just as good as men, as if you telling us that is going to get us to watch. We know that these college women aren't as good as men, even their men's counterparts in college, but yet we still watched. Why did we still watch? We watched because 
the storylines, the, the the rivalries, the battles, the Juju Watts and the freshmen going up against Caitlin Clark. They promoted it well. We watched. Um, Paige coming off a torn ACL, redemption season. They're not even supposed to be there. Whole team injured versus Caitlin Clark. They made sure when they set up the brackets, LSU versus Iowa could happen. They made it happen. They made sure we can get a South Carolina. We can either get a South Carolina LSU or we can get a South Carolina Iowa championship game. They made it happen. Thank you, Sniper Nation. I bet you, yeah, I bet you Liz won't have no seven people waiting. Liz mess around and get locked up and come back home. I guarantee you it's going to be a boatload of people. Flowers, care packages, all types of stuff. Cash apps, PayPal's, all types of stuff coming. I mean, pe pe people was looking at Brittany Griner like, you, you look like you're going to be all right in prison. Ain't nobody mess with you. You can, you can handle your own. Come on, we ain't nobody, don't nobody care. But rap guy, what they keep doing? All the players with that, they keep waving. Shyla Hill, waved. Tia Cooper, waved. Liz Cambish forced her out. Anybody with that? Look, Skylar Diggins, they essentially, they, they boy, they was, they was treating her like dog shit in Phoenix. Skylar Diggins, Skylar Diggins just came out. It came out in report. Skylar Diggins said it was so bad in Phoenix. She was thinking about retiring. Look what they did to Kat, Candace Wiggins. She, she damn near had to expose the league. Thank you, VVS. It's the same as Magic and Bird. But but VVS, watch this. Watch over the next six months how the WNBA fumbled the bag on this. Watch how they fumbled this bag. And, I, and, I, and watch. I promise you, out of the top 10 players that get drafted, I promise you at least two of them get waived. Watch this. Out of the top 10 players... I guarantee you two of them get waived in the first six months of the season, the first three months of the season start. That's what they do. They they get these good players. They waive them. They hold on to these old pairs that nobody know about. If, if I'm running the WNBA, I'm making sure Angel Reese get drafted to the Las Vegas Aces. If I'm running the WNBA, somehow, somehow Cameron Brink is going to end up on the New York Liberty. If I'm running the WNBA, somehow, I don't know how it happened. We just going to, the lottery, it was, I'm going to blame it on the lottery system. Somehow, Camila Cardoso is on the LA Sparks. But I'm, I'm about to have some super teams running around this thing. I'm about to have some super duper teams running around. But see, the, 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 the WNBA, the, they got to understand that to get to the top, man, everything can't be on the up and up. You're going to have to finesse some stuff. You can't have a clean draft. I mean, y'all think it was coincidence? Y'all think it was coincidence that the Bulls get that get get the pick to get Derrick Rose? Y'all think it was coincidence that New Orleans get the pick to get Zion? Y'all think it was coincidence that Victor Wembanyama gets to go to the Spurs, and the Spurs have the best track record with international players? Come on, man! NBA be playing this game too. This ain't all. It can't be no draft system if these players always end up in the right place. These all these young players just happen to end up on the perfect team to hone their skills. Because the NBA knows it's 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 not a good look to have bust. 
Exactly. New world. In new world. I don't care how bad the Detroit Pistons are. If there's if there's a generational talent in the draft, the Detroit Pistons ain't getting the number one pick. Come on. He said the NBA rigged the draft for Cleveland to take LeBron. I don't I don't remember about that. I don't remember that, but it could be true. I don't know. They say Skylar Dickens has an attitude problem in WNBA circles. Um, I didn't I didn't hear that when because I didn't hear that when I lived in Indiana when she was at Notre Dame. And and, and I didn't hear that. I haven't heard that out here in Arizona. I haven't heard that. Is she is she a competitor? Yes. Does she cuss people out? Yes. But I haven't heard no bad attitude. It it is it's why does it seem like in the WNBA? All the so-called players with the bad attitude happen to look the best. Oh, they, they, they keep saying Liz Cambage had a bad attitude. Oh, I bet. Tia Cooper was hard to work with. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, Shyla Hill wasn't good enough. Oh, she was just she was just good enough to be the best player in Australia. But she ain't good enough to be in the WNBA, so you waver. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. He says, uh, Instagram. Here, I'll just put my Instagram here. At FYF Sports Debates. That's my IG, Kid Trunks. That's my IG. Hey, Kid Trunks, I'm about to get up out of here, Kid Trunks, man. I'm already live a little longer than I wanted, man. We're going on three hours, man. We're going on three hours, man. You know, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do them eight hour lives no more, man. We can't do that, man. WNBA is a bad boy. It's like a bad boy. They use sex and sexuality, control their players. Yeah, they, they, they are. Um, nah, the, the WNBA is just the the, the, the well. Like I said, the WNBA is just not going to admit it. But but what they what they need to do y'all remember? I'm going to tell you what the the WNBA needs to do. Y'all remember that once? Y'all remember when the NBA went to the bubble, and then the NBA got in bed with Black Lives Black Lives Matter, and they had all that Black Lives Matter merch and gear, and players got to say their slogans and stuff. But what happened was they lost a lot of fans because of it. There's a, there, uh, the, the majority white and black of the fan base in the NBA did not care for that uh, Black Lives Matter stuff. And so what did the NBA do that next year? Oh, they you know, they essentially said the Black Lives Matter. They said, y'all ain't good for business. So y'all can take, so you know what they did with all them Black Lives Matter t-shirts? They sent all them shirts to Cambodia, South Africa, any third world country that could take all that merchandise. They sent that merchandise to all third world countries. Now you can you can go to the back streets in Nigeria. You might see a little kid wearing an NBA Black Lives Matter t-shirt, but you would damn sure ain't about to see it here in the US. They separated themselves from any movement or group that is bad for business. There is a group attached to the WNBA that the WNBA needs to separate themselves from. Now, I'm not saying the players need to separate themselves from that. That's your personal life. But the WNBA is now too closely connected to that movement. And now that they've gotten bed with that movement, they now see that being connected to this movement ain't good for business. But because they have so many of pe so many people in that community now running teams in the front office, in the in the in 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 big spot in big time spots, um in decision making spots in WNBA front offices, they're never going to disconnect themselves from it until they now that, now because they've allowed it to in ingrain and embed itself into management ownership front offices, 
Now they will never disassociate from it because now they got too many people in power that are too closely connected to it. Yeah, Adam John. Hey, Adam John, I want you to go tell me. Where can you find one of them jerseys with them names on it? The, the, the NBA separated themselves from that black. And then you know what they immediately said the next year, Adam John? <laughs> the immediately the next year, they said, hey, everybody's standing for the national anthem. Get your asses up on your feet during this national anthem. We're not trying to have that dumb shit. All that Jonathan Isaac. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. Get up off your goddamn knees. Everybody's standing. Take that dumb shit somewhere else because it was just bad for the dollar. And you know what you didn't hear? You didn't hear the players complain a lick. Because the players started looking, because you know what they probably went to the players and did? They probably went to the players and said, look, let me show you some of these numbers for the money. Let me show you this money. Now, this is what the money looked like before we did the Black Lives Matter stuff. This is what the money looked like after. Y'all choose what we want to do. The players was right on board. Man, come on, give us our money back. He says, Adam, he, Adam John says two or three hours is good for your channel. You know, I always be doing two to three hours, but I'm saying I'm trying to keep it right at two to three hours. And a lot of times we get that seven, eight hours. I'm not trying to do that. WNBA Dick connecting itself with that type of group message. It really cuts off a huge segment. It does. Look what, look what happened with Bud Light. Um, Lynette Woodard. Who's Lynette Woodard? What does she say, though? Says so she's an American basketball player. What did, what did Lynette Woodard say? Oh, Lynette Woodard says Caitlin Clark didn't break her scoring record. Then backtracks the comments. It says Kate, Caitlin Clark's name is all over. It says my record was hidden from everyone for 43 years. I'll just go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. I don't think my scoring record has been broken because you can't duplicate what you're not duplicating. Woodard said at the Women's Basketball Coaches Association Convention in Cleveland on Saturday. Unless you come with the men's basketball and a two-point shot, hey, you know. Um, she says, you can help me spread the word with it out. On Sunday, after Clark, Iowa fell to South Carolina in the National Championship game, she would release a statement on social media saying, Caitlin holds the scoring record. Oh, she, she, she backtracked her statement. She backtracked it. That's wild right there. At Kansas, Woodard was a four-time All-American, first woman to have her jersey retired. Oh, so she got a little clout on her name. She knows what she's doing. Look, I don't care about them records, man. All, all, the, all the people in college basketball with them scoring records at the top, like, did you did y'all hear something they said? They said something super interesting. They said this is the first time that uh, the best score in 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 Division One women's basketball is in a championship game, right? They also said something else that was interesting that Don Staley said. They said that Don Staley tells recruits, if you want to come to South Carolina to win Player of the Year, this ain't the team for you. If you want to come to South Carolina to win a championship, this is the team for you. Don, Don Staley is basically saying you ain't going to be able to come up, come over here and put up no 30 points per game and get player of the years, but you will win championships. Because if you really think about it, South Carolina has about eight players on their team that could easily score 20 a game if they go to some other trash D1 school. They come, they come to South Carolina to win a championship. And that's what I say with Caitlin Clark. When I when you when you, when you who, who, whose points whose points are more legitimate, you at Juju Juju's or Caitlin's? I'm gonna ask y'all that. Whose points are more legitimate? Who who's really the better score, Juju or Caitlin? Because it could be said that Juju did what she did against tougher competition. They wasn't running around playing slouches all year. And Juju had zero help around her. Nah, no. That was an all-time carry job by Juju Watkins. See, they had Hannah Stokey, who was a five-star recruit. 
They had the graduate transfer, who was the number two graduate transfer in the country. I forgot her name, the senior. Um, they had the Marshall girl, who was one of the top recruits. They they had um, some players. That USC team had that USC team the year before didn't even have a winning record. Hold on, look at U USC before Juju Watson got, got there didn't even have a winning record. Juju not only got him to the tournament, I think they got him to the Elite Eight or something crazy like that, or Sweet Sixteen, something crazy. This is a fact, though. Like, let, let me watch this. Let me pull up USC schedule. I, I don't even. I haven't even looked at their schedule yet. I'm almost positive they played a tougher schedule just because of the conference that she in. All right. So they went. So I'm gonna tell you what their record was last year. Right. So Juju went to what this is the team that Juju went to. Juju went to a team. All right. They didn't have a losing record. They had it. They actually they weren't bad. She she went to a team that was 20 and 10. With 67 percent win percentage. All right. Let me see if they even made the tournament. All right. They went to the tournament and lost in the first round to South Dakota State. Ju Juju gets there. Juju Watkins gets there. They go to 29 and 6, 82% win percentage. And then Juju gets them. Juju gets them to the Sweet Six. No, was it the Sweet 16? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, she got them to. First round, second round, sweet. She got, she got him to the Elite Eight. She got him to the Elite Eight by herself. You said Caitlin went Glock for Glock with South Carolina. Look, Caitlin's Kate, a good player. See, a lot of y'all are trying to, a lot of y'all are making this like I'm saying she's not good. No, I'm not saying I'm saying she's really good, especially against other collegiate women. I'm saying when she gets to the WNBA, it's going to be tough for her to be as good because the WNBA is not going to allow her to be good. The the, the players, the veterans that are there aren't go, don't want to see her succeed. Like you what you never heard was when when Victor Wimbenyamba was getting drafted. Going into the draft, what you never heard was you never heard. You really didn't see a ton of active players talking about, oh, Victor, Victor ain't Victor going to have to work for what he got here in the league. Victor ain't going to be that nice. You heard a lot of players talking about, man, that's a unicorn. Great player. X, Y and Z. J, J, B, J, G, B says they can't stop her. Who, who can't stop her? All right. What I mean, in, the WNBA is a different beast. So we'll see. Hell yeah, you better give them the brown treatment. I wouldn't build properly. Hagen Clark was all they had. They barely beat UConn. Um, that's not true. That's not all they had. Hannah Stalky saved them. Hannah Stalky was the best player in the UConn game. Now, if you're talking the game against LSU, yeah, okay, I'll give you Caitlin Clark there. But if you're talking about the game against UConn, their best player was Hannah Stalky. And the Martin girl. Shit, Caitlin came up short that game, 0-7 from the three-point line. If they didn't have players, Hannah Stokey wouldn't have came. Hannah Stokey killing them in the paint. Shoot. If it wasn't for Hannah Stokey today, they wouldn't even have been in the game. See, what I didn't like was every time Caitlin Clark threw a pass, leading one of these players into two and three South Carolina players, and then like players like Hannah Stokey or, or Martin would score. The, the, the announcers would be like, great pass by 
Caitlin Clark. I'm like, no, that was a great finish by old girl that just caught the ball and scored on like two, three players. They gas her up every time she does anything. Great assist, but no. They she just passed to her. She going to the lane with three players on her. It's Carmilla Cardosa. Is not a giant. She's only six seven. For janitors, all right, you can call them janitors all you want. So that so that means you basically saying uh that means you basically saying um. I we're gonna be trash next year. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying, Yellow Bear. I know what you're saying. I, 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 I'm just telling you who it is. But great, Hokage. Boy, they was glazing her every time she did anything. Great pass by Caitlin Clark. I'm like, no, look, Hannah Stokey just scored a layup on Camila Cardosa and two other defenders. That's a great finish. What are you talking about? Great pass. You didn't hear her saying nothing about old girl defense on Caitlin Clark. Her second, her, her second has defense on Caitlin Clark was on. Oh, that was. I bet she felt like Tony Allen was guarding her. And, 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 and then I didn't hear nobody talk about how towards the end of that game with Caitlin Clark she just folded, basically gave up. Don't you? South Carolina just beat the life out of them. They stopped trying at the end of that game. Well, as soon as Caitlin Clark chucked up that three with two minutes to go, just came down and chucked up that three that clanked off the back rim. I said, oh, I said, they tapped out. They done. They done. And then the one that really sealed it was old girl snatched the ball from her for a third time. Give me that. Let's go for another layup. Game. Tapped. Made her tap. And we, I, I guarantee you, if we flip that whole scenario and made that LeBron and the Lakers versus somebody else, and LeBron tapped out like that at the end of the game, the whole narrative would be about how LeBron quit on his team. She quit. She tapped out. She choked. She did. If we if we talk basketball, the way if you guys came in here with the same energy that you give players like LeBron or KD or Giannis when they don't show up, where are all the people that's supposed to come in here saying she choked? She she choked in another national championship setting. She 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 is zero and two in the finals. It don't matter, Yellow Bear. See, Yellow Bear, don't nobody give a LeBron James a pass for losing to San Antonio when his second best player was Booby Gibson. I'm not trying to hear that. I'm All I'm saying is keep the same energy. The way they come in here, flooding in here, talking about LeBron choked. I didn't hear nobody coming in here talking about Caitlin Clark got a losing record in the finals. She 0-2 in the finals. And so now you heard now, now a new narrative. If you go look at Twitter, there was a new narrative getting crafted just for Caitlin Clark. Oh, you, you can still be the GOAT even if you don't have championships. You, you can still be the GOAT. Oh, now you can be the GOAT without championships. Oh, okay. Now you can be the GOAT. How she choked? I didn't say she choked. I'm just trolling. Um, they call get they were everybody today was calling Caitlin Clark to go. To me, I don't think she's the best women's college basketball player I've ever seen. I believe Maya Moore was better. I believe Brianna Stewart was better. I mean, if we've been honest. I believe Brittany Griner was better in college at Baylor. If we if we just talking college women's college basketball, in my lifetime, I've seen better players than Caitlin Clark in women's basketball. 
Maya Moore, Brianna Stewart, and Brittany Griner. I, and, and, and and that's not even really considering all the other players. Like I, I'm not even giving all the other players any consideration. But I could just start with those three, where I'm definitive about those three. Cheryl Swoops the goat. I don't think Cheryl Swoops is the goat. Hell no. Cynthia Cooper. To me, Cynthia Cooper is the goat of women's WNBA basketball. Hold on, hold on. Now you can see what what team see that's what I'm saying. What team base camp? What team was super? Was it was it was it the team she was on when she was a freshman when she won most valuable player in a championship? Or was it the team when she was a senior when she won most valuable players in the championship? Or was it the team when she was a junior and won most valuable player and was a championship and won the championship? Or was it the team when she was a sophomore? and one most valuable player in a championship. So if that team was super, they were only super because Brianna was there because that she was the most valuable player as a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, and she won championships all four years. What do you mean? She was, she was the best. She, she was the, the, the factor. Okay. Base cab. Who? What other players made the team super then? Tell me. Start start naming names. Just like I told Jared, start telling me the other players that made this team super without running to Google. Just as fast as you type, type it right now. Okay, tell me what players. Because you, if you know Brianna Stewart, then you should know the rest of the team that made them super. Yeah, I bet you don't know names because them motherfuckers was not super without without Brianna Stewart there. She came in as a freshman and was one most valuable player in the championship. Then she came in as a sophomore. I'm the most valuable player in another championship. Then she came in as a junior. I'm still the most valuable player in another championship. And then she came in as a senior. You know how hard that is to do in college basketball in a one and done playoff setting? And, and you're talking about in a one and done setting where you can't have no mistakes. Even as dominant as South Carolina was, they lost to Iowa last year. Come on, man. They had no hiccups in four years. And you telling me that's only because of a super team? No. Hell no. I mean, shit, Shaq and Kobe uh, 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 was a super team with Carl Malone and them, and they lost. Shoot, super teams make mistakes. Shoot, I don't know what you would call what Brianna Stewart was on. If that's if 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 Shaq and Kobe and all these other teams are super teams, then Brianna Stewart that was an ultra team or something. Base cap. How is the team super and you don't know none of them? You can't tell me. You can't run around saying it was a super team and you can't tell me none of the players. Yellow Bear, if they was a super team with Brianna Stewart, tell me the players. No one else wanted to go to any other school but UConn. No, you, you, you know they do. They do it. They did. They did do a hell of a job recruiting, but now the equalizer has come into basketball, the NIL. And so all the five stars that Gino used to get. Gino can't get them all no more because of the NIL. So because of NIL, he's going to lose out on players like Juju. He's going to lose out on players like Camilo Cardosa, right? He's going to lose out on a, a lot of players because now players can go like players like um, Cameron Brink. She can take her talents to Stanford. I'm making just as much money here in Stanford. I can be closer to home. I can be in my own demographic. I can still bring my high school fan base with me. Sniper. I think Cynthia Cooper is the closest thing, the male version of Michael Jordan. Four championships in a row, and she was the best player in the league while doing it. 
they did have a super team though. So I, I ain't gonna lie there. They definitely had a super team. He says, Gino, well, you don't say that about Gino. Gino just got the number one player in the country as soon as the tournament ended. So you can't say Gino can't get players no more because as soon as the tournament ended, they signed up the number one women's player in the country. So don't say that. Don't say that about Gino. Gino, Gino about to come back with a vengeance. Yeah, there's a reason why Paige came back. Y'all like the yeah, Paige came back because Paige, you know, they about to come back loaded. Yeah, I think she just came back. She didn't come back for the love of the game. She came back because she know they about to run the table. I don't, I don't, base kid, base kid. It don't matter. Gino got the girl to sign. You, you could say it was Paige. Paige ain't never going to get the credit for it. Gino R.E.M. is. This UConn is about to be loaded next year. Now, now next year, you can say UConn is a super team. You only building against your own argument. What argument? No, what I'm saying is I don't care if Brianna Stewart had a super team. She was the best player on the best team. And they made no mistakes. If, if anybody has a case to be the greatest collegiate basketball player of all time, it's Brianna Stewart. She was the it's just like it's just like when Kareem Abdul Jabbar was in college. Yeah, nobody cared that Kareem Abdul Jabbar had the best college team in the country. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is going to go down as the best collegiate player of all time. Same with a guy like Bill Walton. Those two guys are going to go down as the best collegiate men's basketball players of all time. And nobody cares that they had a super team. That don't matter. Y'all just, mm -hmm. just trying to cope with the fact that she lost But Brianna Stewart made sure that they were the best team. They rarely lost a game if they lost any. And they always won the championship, no hiccups in a one and done setting. Like if like if you watched a game tonight, you could you could have a debate on who the best player on the court was. It could be argued that Camilo Cardoso was the best player on the floor. Right? E Even when they played UConn, it could be argued that Hannah Stokey was the best player on the floor. When Brianna Stewart played, it was never no argument. She was always the best player on the floor. He said, I love me some Tina Thompson. Tina Thompson was pretty popular. But they reminded me the Bulls why they was made up because you 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 would compare Tina Thompson to um, Horace Grant, Cynthia Cooper to Michael Jordan. Um, who was the other player they had? I forgot. Oh, VVS, you ain't lying because you know what? All eyes are gonna be on the WNBA. Are they gonna fumble the bag on this? Robin Roberts. Oh, they had swoops. Yeah, swoops. My bad. Tripping. Maya Moore is the best college player, not Brianna. But but I I agree. I, you know, I, I think Maya, I think just talent wise, if you're not looking at winning, if you're not incorporating winning, Maya Moore is the best college basketball player I've ever seen. I mean, some people could even say Shamika Holesquaw. See, y'all forget about her. And I'm talking about she Shamika Holesquaw in college. Not what she did in the NBA, but if you look at Shamika Holesclaw in college, she has a case to be the best basketball player of all time.
if you just look at Shamika Hoslaw in college, he said the LGBTQ already blew it. So I mean, look, it, it, it's arguable. Not, not not taking anything away from Caitlin Clark. She she is a legend. She's gonna go down as one of the greats in college. Uh, I'm curious to see how it translates. And and uh, my 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 biggest thing is, I know her talent can translate if they allow it to blossom. I'm not necessarily worried about that. My thing is, does the WNBA allow her to blossom? Because for the WNBA to succeed, they're going to have to allow these new 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 players, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, Cameron Brinks. They're going to have to allow these names to be bigger than the WNBA. They're going to have to allow some player to be the face of the league, because the WA in and of itself nobody cares about. Are they going to allow that to happen? That's the biggest crew right there. But look, y'all, it's FYF Sports, man. It's been another great podcast episode. We're going on three hours and forty five minutes. I appreciate everybody that's kind of stuck around, stayed in the conversation, man. Rap Guy Reloading, Sniper Nation. Some of y'all are new names. So if you're a new name like Yellow Bear, um, some of y'all, if I haven't seen you, maybe, you, maybe you've maybe you already been subbed up. But if you're a new person, man, hit the sub button, man. We we, we not only have did my show right here, we're going to have people like Fontaine's Five with his fantasy sports show, uh, sports betting. We're going to have uh, the crossover episode with Ace 30 and those guys running that show on Saturdays. And then again, if you a content creator, even if you got your own channel, if you want to do a show here on FYL Sports, if you want to maybe give a little boost to your platform, if you got a YouTube channel and you're trying to give it a boost, if you got a topic, if you got something that you could be consistent with and you want to run your own show over here on FYL Sports, just join the Discord. Let me know. Um, and we're going to get you over here to FYF Sports. And I'm going to drop the Discord link. I'm going to drop the, uh, the link to the Discord one more time. Yeah, I'm about to shut it down. Though. I'm about to shut it down here. All right. Let me get this link in here real quick. Share it with the people. All right, join this Discord, man. Hit me up on the Discord and let me know if you want to start a show here on FYF Sports. Opportunity to make a little extra cash because you can share your own cash app and you get 100% of the ad revenue. I'm just trying to expand the platform because we're trying, we trying to take this from YouTube over to other networks. And it's hard to have a discussion with other networks when you don't have multiple shows. So renegade, renegade, that renegade. I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna be invested in helping you get your own show started at least once a week. Um, and we just got to come up with a name. We can get you started ASAP, uh, and we're we gonna get you right. Um, and for anybody else, anybody else that's interested, like I said, you might be nervous on doing it on your own, whatnot, man. You might want to pair up with somebody and do it. However you want to do it, man. We can get you set up. But look, FYL Sports, man. Another great podcast episode, man. We're gonna be back with more sports and news, y'all. But until then, it's FYF Sports, and we out. Yeah, we done came from the bottom. Mad that we up, but I don't hear him talking. Started with knowledge inside of my noggin. We took a dream and then we started blogging. Put my city on the map now. I'ma say how it is and now I'm back down. On the road to 100k, we finna act out. We gon' show them that we not just in the background. We the main event, we the main show We the one that people always gonna pay for If I F, we the best, no debate though Easy Number on one sports beat. channel, every angle I'ma show them all how we ride Best sports style show, we not like them guys We playing it safe, are they better than lines We pushing the narrative all of the time Like who to go, in the game is not MJ Kobe Bryant top 10, now what we say I keep my life, you want us very overrated Keep it real, if it ain't fact, we don't say yeah Now it's safe, but we won't be ignored Peace in the lick, I'm missing the draws again, a hell of pain. I got a lot to deal with, and my mind is kind of slipping away. What's on the line? I made up my mind, so shit, I'll just taste it at great. Whatever it is, whatever it was, it's never gonna be the same. How do I explain what's been going on with me? You say that I changed, but you didn't know the old me. I think.
that I saved you Tell me who gon' save me I'm way too fucked up in this club I'm ashamed, baby You say that I change But you ain't really know me When I'm around my dogs, girl They just can't control me Trying to spend my time right Using every second of it Trying to spend my time right Using every second of it For it's too late Girl, before it's too late Can I speak my mind right? Girl, before it's too late I've been moving backwards Rolling up the backwards Out of being dash, dash Do you have my back, girl? For it's too late Can I say my peace, girl? You know what you mean to me You just keep it real with me I've been moving backwards Rolling up the backwards Every time I'm backstab I... Missing the lake, I'm missing the drawers again, a hell of pain I got a lot of deal with it, my mind is kinda slipping away What's on the line, I made up my mind, some shit out just tasted it great Whatever it is, whatever it was, it's never gonna be the same Floating again and I'm running the map They say the best defense is just to attack Hopping through too much, it's hard to attach All this bone on is beyond to relax Gotta get up, gotta get it again They ain't get the message, we spinning again I fit my back, I'm just leaving it in Get what they want, then they leaving again I cannot act like this ain't nothing new Been getting smarter with all I've been through Got what days I more rewarding than truth Tired of keeping it G just to lose Let it all out when I step in the booth With death for some months, now it's time to recruit Met the investments, it's time to recoup It's time to recoup, but how do I explain what's been going on with me? You say that I changed, but you didn't know the old me I think that I saved you, tell me who gon' save me I'm way too fucked up in this club, I'm ashamed, baby You say that I changed, but you ain't really know me When I'm around my dogs, girl, you just can't control me Trying to spend my time right, using every second of it Trying to spend my time right, using every second of it For it's too late, girl, before it's too late Can I speak my mind right, girl, before it's too late I've been moving backwards, rolling up the backwards Every time I'm backstab, I... Yo, Louis? Shawty.